Good num num morning. We're back for session 19 of <laughs> Blue Reflection Second Light. Continuing our uh, NG plus Death Wish difficulty run. Um, off screen, I did do a little bit of grinding, not too much. We were level 6 and now we're level 8. And I also um, grinded the ever living shit out of. Um, resources to get some more food so we have some you know actual sandwiches to burn through we still can't equip any fragments so we're still slightly held back by that i suppose <clears throat> but we're in as good a position as we're probably gonna be for a little while so that we just have to carry on and the main thing that i've learned in my grinding time is that when it's a 1v1 you can usually do it just fine not 1v1, no, I mean, not the game mode, not, when it's only one enemy, you can usually do it just fine. You can usually just kind of, like, truck along and be fine. Oh, we had to load for a second there, interesting. Um, it's when there's more than one enemy <laughs> is when it starts falling apart, at least for me. Is when I really started noticing it, that I'd, like, I'd run around and try little things and just really struggle to survive. Give me a clean first step to a happy life. Oh, and 2A still won't open, but funnily enough. Wait, what does that say? Uh, peeking it through the window, it looks like just any old classroom. Then why can't we go in? <laughs> uh, writer's room, door won't open. Wait, what's the writer's room even for? Writing f um, news broadcasts. Uh, though free space works just fine. Yeah, they don't use it. Also, you might already notice, but I have changed Owl's costume. I've chucked on the... Um, oh, it's raining. Oh, it's raining and the evening. That makes a kind of interesting colour in the sky. Ooh. Oh, you have an umbrella, Raina? Since when? Hang on. <laughs> Hang on. I have an idea. That's why I'm like, hang on a minute. <laughs> Where? Oh, there you are. <laughs> Sorry, you got... <laughs> what would be a good one for hiding under the rain? Hang on. That'll do. Hang on. <laughs> Hang on. It's, yeah, this is going to absolutely be one of those playthroughs. There we go. Anyway. <laughs> anyway. How you doing, Rainer? So we have everything we need to cook. We put all this here. But yeah, I've changed some of the costumes. I've put... I'm on alternate colour for Owl. I've given Raina her jacket back, but just in her default colour instead of the alternate that I use. Uh, Coco is still the same, and I believe Yuki is still the same. Just because I really don't like Yuki's alt colour anyway. Yeah, so, uh, the Yuki's alt g genuinely just really isn't my thing, so I've ju I'm just steering away from it. But yes, good morning, welcome back. <laughs> I know I'm just kind of taking it slow for this first minute, let people kind of hop in if they're going to hop in. But we got as far as just past the stealth section in Kokoro's Heartscape. So now we're pushing towards that fog section where we've got to light the lanterns, I believe. And then we can start seeing, like, you know, the treehouse and whatnot. Morning, Camo. Ah, this air feels so good. It makes me want to run around, even in this rain. It might be fun to play tag here in this rain. Playing tag at school, that sounds awesome! <laughs> in this rain? <laughs> We'd get in so much trouble if we did this at normal school. It feels so rebellious. Uh, just don't overdo it, okay, Yuki? Yeah, I've put um, the alternate colour jacket on Al just because it, it's... I don't know, it was just being weird for me when I was grinding to have it just in the shirt. I was, I was so used to having a jacket, it was, I couldn't get round to it. And with Rainer, I put a default jacket on. 
We've had a beautiful umbrella. You, you, you might have just missed it, Camo, but I've already just taken like a. I already made made a moment with uh, Rainer and Yuki un hiding both under the umbrella since it was right there. <laughs> I did as soon as I saw the stream. I went, hang on a minute, Rainer can hold an umbrella. Hang, let me let me get a screenshot of that. As in, I'm keeping Coco. Coco in at default because it's different from what I had her in for the main playthrough, and Yuki is staying as default because I really don't like her ult. Oh jeez, it's suddenly so bright. But yeah, um, we ended last stream at level 6, I'm level level 8, so I've done a bit of grinding. And um, I've got a shit ton of sandwiches now, I've got 27. So hopefully, we can be a little bit more of a survivor. I like the title altercation for Al's Harem. Yeah, I'm going to try and keep it going that every time I, I will think of a different pun or joke surrounding it. Just to you know, spice it up since we already know what the events of the game are. So it's not like exploring Shio's heartscape because we know what to expect. So I want to try and have a little bit of fun. Like, <laughs> I already know what one I'm going to put for like some characters joining. Like, when there's some characters that join, like, I was like, I'm already like, oh, okay, when Hiori joins, this is going to be the title of that stream. When Uta joins, this is going to be the title of that stream. <laughs> Things like that. Because I was going to put girl domination, but I thought that might be taken weird, so I steered away from using that title. I do want to try fighting these guys again, now we're a little higher- Oh fuck, well now we're gonna fight, go into the main meat of it. I was trying to get a back attack at least. Maybe, maybe we can do this. So if I can beat one of these guys, I'll at least be like, okay yeah, we're in a position where we might be able to handle it kind of thing. Uh, you, give our defense boost please. Ow. Survive. Ooh, okay. I pitched the ideas if I think of any. <laughs> Ooh, ah, oh, fuck. Okay, never mind. Tried to squeeze in a heal. Yeah, no, I... I... <laughs> I, I think I have to accept we're not look at how little progress we've made and look how much it's nearly killed us. Let's let's get the fuck out of here. Nah, not yet. We can't deal with those guys just yet. Well so that I noticed that you know like it randomly started raining. I've been trying to figure out what stopped it from randomly starting to rain last time. Because there was something, there was a point in the game where after a set point it stopped raining ever in the main journey. And I think it might have been the fireworks machine. When we built the fireworks machine I think that affected something where it had to render the fireworks in the sky and it stopped it from ever raining. And apparently there's little scenes that can be found if you go out whilst it's raining. So it's like, okay, when we, when we get to the point where we stop putting things down, when I build the fireworks machine, I'm not going to activate it under any circumstance because it might adapt, like you know, it might um, affect the weather. I don't want to fight this dog though before we move on. This was the enemy I was my go-to because there's only one of them. If at any time I encountered a dog where there was two of them, I kind of went on high alert when I was grinding because that's the biggest thing I've learned with Death Wish. The thing that makes the challenge is the number of enemies. If it's just the enemy on their own, it's they might get one or two hits that are a little scary, but as a whole, they're pretty manageable. It's the moment there's two of them is when it starts to get scary. <laughs> our power and our hope. <laughs> Look, I already know when Uta joins, that one's going to be something along the lines of Al's marriage quest or something. <laughs> For the stream title. But then, like, if we were both, like, super on the um, Al Hiori 
uh, bandwagon up until Uta joins. So, so I feel like I need to do something with that and just have a bit of fun with it because Hiori is extremely flirtatious when it suits. Despite being a completely naive, bubbly, like, bean, she can be very flirtatious when it suits. Did I get everything from over here? Yes, I did. So we just need to press up to the, um, the fog machine. And I will get fight you as well. Because resources are going to be <laughs> so goddamn important as this game goes on. <laughs> now we understand what Death Wish can really present to you. It's going to get so brutal later on. Also, I was thinking as well off stream um, how I'm going to handle those two DLCs. You know, considering um, when we unlocked Ryza's DLC, when I entered at the appropriate level, it still kicked my ass until I was like eight or nine levels above it. I've decided I'm going to wait until we reach chapter 10, now we know where that boundary is, to unlock both that and the beach one, and then do both of them. Like, dedicate a whole stream to trying to knock out both of them in one go. So when we unlock the Riser Heartscape, we won't bother with it, we'll just continue the main plot. And then when we reach the chapter 10, regardless of what level we are, we will then tackle it there and see how it goes. <laughs> Revelations hour <all> loud. <laughs> How's your playthrough going anyway, Camo? Wow, look at this fog. Uh, we'll get lost at this rate. <laughs> I know what to do. Let's light this. I bet it'll make the fog go away. This isn't a video game. <laughs> if only you knew. Hey, we might as well try it. It's lit. Let's see if it works. I know. We'll make a secret hideout so those mean bullies can't find us. We could make it in a, in a tree. It'll be like a tree house. Another memory. A secret hideout. This girl seems to have been your friend. Yeah, though I can't remember who she was. Eh, more fog. It's like the rest of the lantern. Something may happen. <laughs> Officer, ow, oh, right, this conversation. Officer! And of course I can't hear you. We're texting. Wouldn't it be just talking person? It's way cooler. We're like spies on a secret mission. Uh, plus, if you talk in person, you might be noticed by the enemy. I guess you have a point there. So yeah, about the lantern. Uh, we came in trying to fix the leak, right? I think I saw it around when we found the materials for that. Oh, great memories. Look around there, then. Famous Yuki's Dungeon of the best gold photo mode shenanigans. <laughs> da oh, man, like... I both can't wait, but at the same time can wait to get back to dungeons like Yuki's. Because, like, Yuki's Dungeon has such a beautiful ending, but it's so goddamn tragic for the entire run-through. Like, it's so, so heart-crushing to go through that dungeon. Especially, like, the reveal that, like, you know, she died in the real world. And the way they handle it with like the sound effects and like the the heartbeat monitor and all that it's like it's so tragic and it's just because rain is such a goddamn champion she finds a way to make it have a happy end it's the same with um actually when we get to rainer's heartscape that one there's going to be some scenes in rainer's and probably yuki's where i'm just not going to talk when we get to them now i know they're there and i know what to expect when we get to them i just want to hear the, the voice acting work because obviously, like, when I was going through Rain once, I didn't expect the plot twist of her actually admitting she was in love with um, Yuki. So talks over it for the whole thing. When we get to that scene, I'm, I wanna, I'm just going to hit mute on my mic and just let it play out. Because I want to hear the voice acting. I want, um, as much as the voice acting is really good and I've managed to catch a lot of it, obviously I don't catch all of it while I'm talking over a lot of it. It has to be really, really, like pronounced for me to notice it, like when it was Rainer and Yuki shouting their emotions out at each other. That I shut up for because you could hear the voice acting was amazing. How are we all doing health-wise? Uh, about half. I guess we could tackle another Reaper. Hey. 
So if you're obviously just done Yuki's, so that you don't go, um, <clears throat> you don't go straight to um, Uta's after that. You, and yet you, you do yet another dungeon or two yet, I think. So you, you use it was user and lime, then owl, then Uta. That's about to hit us. I oh, know we're about to get healed as well, but that's about to hit us. So I'm gonna make sure that item catches. Oh, Kokoro! Oh, jeez. Have this. Oh fuck, we might be in trouble. Oh, this transformation might not save us. We might be in trouble. We might die. <laughs> we might find out what, it, what happens if you game over in this game. Just because I got cocky and I was like, yeah, I'm sure we'll be fine. It missed! Oh, it missed! <laughs> kill it now. Please tell me just kills. Uh oh. Okay, good. There was the glass and glass cannon and the cannon too. <laughs> Yeah, that's a uh, GTFO to get that health reset and then run back in. Yeah, what is actually everyone's stats? I haven't really looked at that uh, recently. Uh, 3625, 3416, and um, 2633. And all the same um, Eva recovery speed. Okay. So, exactly, the, you know, how I always called it, where Coco is going to eventually replace us as like the most bit the highest damage dealer. Uh Reino is an absolute tank. Which doesn't mean too much in this early game, because the enemies hit such like a damn truck you don't really notice it, but still. And then Owl will continue being our middle grounder. I am curious when we get to like say Hina's dungeon, you know, around the time where it started to turn around in our favour in the main run. If it will really noticeably turn around in our favor in that one, or whether it will still like kick our ass and keep on having to do this back and forth in and out like we've been doing. I also think it will be more manageable when we get, you know, revival based skills. Right now we can just heal, we don't have any way to pick someone up, we don't have any kind of KO recovery items or skills. So if someone gets put down we've just got to leave because there's no way we can pick them back up. But as it goes so far, I am enjoying the extra challenge. It hasn't... It has yet to feel like it's complete bullshit in some areas. Or like that it's really stacked against you for no good reason. Like it feels like it's insanely difficult, but doable. And the whole time it feels that way, I'm all for it. The moment it feels like it's intentionally like severely rigged against you. To a point where it stops being fun. Then that's when I'll start debating <clears throat> changing difficulties. Hopefully we don't get to that point though. If it stays like this, where it's like, it might be a slow progress each stream, but we're still making progress, then that's fine. The day stream, it could be and do um, out doting on all the girls. Oh, and outing with the girls. Oh, I read that completely wrong. <laughs> yeah, that's a good pun. I'll think about that one. This should be the last lantern. <clears throat> I wonder if that did it. Let's go check. Because we both know there will be a point where there will be just a date stream. Especially when we start getting everyone. Like, that happened like two or three times at least in the main playthrough. Where there were so many dates we needed to do. That it genuinely um, got to a point where it was like a whole three to four hour chunk was just dates. That's great. I'll just go this way. Avoid more of the Reaper enemies since they're clearly too dangerous for us right now. Which is annoying, because on the normal playthrough, he went in and killed all of them. Ooh, more bread berries. That's the thing I'm low on that stops me from making as many um, sandwiches.
can't. Even if I did, they just bullied me even more. Oh, because we can actually go get that memory thing now. And I know it was a bit of an odd video the other day. I was going to talk about it last stream, but I just forgot. But um, I'm kind of happy I did that um, that little odd extra video of um, Blue Reflection talking about the... I was not talking, showcasing the leitmotif of um, the game. It was an odd little thing that I did. And then I wasn't really sure like why. I just really wanted to do it and so committed to it. Uh, the biggest data font is after Hiyori and Mio's Heartscape, if I remember right. Oh, okay. Yeah, I do actually remember them having like a million because they get the you, they pretty much drag them from all the way from rank one to like six or seven because that's where everyone else is, if I recall. I knew it would work. Now we can. <laughs> Kokoro, what's wrong? I can't help you if you don't talk to me. This is a secret hideout. It's. Secret hideout? I wonder what happened. They said they were going in to build it in a, in a tree, didn't they? There's only choice to go check it out. That is like a mini boss variant. Uh oh. Everyone ready? No, I'm not ready. Ow. No. Let's do this. Support skills. Some skills allow you to power up and support your allies. Uh, knockdown boost, yes. I, I wish it game let me choose because I would have put it on Kokoro considering she's starting at rank 3. Uh, knockdown boost now in effect. For a short time, it's easy to knock down a target. Support skills, the skills, yada yada, yes. Debuff. You could also weaken the son of a bitch. Like Sparkle Ball. Now it's, no, it's weaker to that thing, and you can check it with the pause menu. You can check it with this, the assassin interest. It's got its pierce resistance down. I liked um, that video. It made me notice more things about the music, especially since I don't use headphones much. Well, <laughs> fair enough. Obviously, when I'm streaming, I'm only listening to the soundtrack for the headphones, so it's just the ringing in my ear of it made it really apparent to me. And to be fair, it was nice for me to just, like, dedicate a day to going through... It wasn't even a day, it was like two hours, I think, of going through the entire game's soundtrack and hit listening out for every single, um, time I picked up on... The, every time I noticed the leitmotif, and just how many times they opted. And I'm pretty sure I probably missed a number of them anyway, but I got all the ones that I was interested in. I can't believe we pulled that off. We were so in sync. Also, the enemy, like, didn't attack us. We were able to get by if we can keep that up. Well, as long as we don't run into anything stronger. Why didn't you stand up to them? Crying won't do you any good. It's so weird knowing that's Shio. I can't. Even if I did, they just bully me even more. No, they wouldn't. Huh? If you just get scared and run away, they'll take advantage of that. They think they can bully you because you're weak and won't do anything about it. That's... If you had just come to me, I could have done something. Hey, can I get that resource that's near you without you, like... Actually, I... I cross fingers, I think we'll be okay. I, because we're all at full health, so even if we get wallops, we should hopefully, hopefully be okay. Ow, ow, ow. Nice, managed to interrupt it. Oh, <laughs> Alright, now, now we're safe. We only took one hit. Just that knockdown is very important. I just wanted to get this. And we can't open this because we need... Oh yeah, an axe. And then we can get that recipe. I can't even remember what that recipe is.
That looks a lot richer in this outfit. You think? I, I kind of see it. She doesn't look a bit like she's like in a suit. No way. I'm not. A I'm not strong like you, Shio. Why? Why do you always say such horrible things about yourself? Huh? I hate it. I don't want to see you crying like that anymore. I also think the costume makes sense considering the summer heat they're all going through. If you're gonna wear a jacket, you'd want it to be a brighter colour and not just, you know, something dark that would absorb the heat in. Holy moly, how did a couple of kids make something so incredible? I find it hard to believe this could be created by children. Yeah, the first instance of the memory exaggerating things. This world is full of unusual sights. Nothing is a perfect reproduction of the thing Utsubo is remembering. Uh, sorry, excuse me. I think Utsubo is remembering. I remember. What we built was nothing like this. Besides, our secret hideouts. We worked so hard. I'm sorry. I'm so sorry I couldn't stop them. It's not your fault, Kokoro. It's those bullies! Just now. The real secret base was destroyed. This one is just an idolized version. An idealized version from my memory. Oh. By destroyed, you mean. Those kids who bullied you, right? Yeah. They couldn't stand me for some reason. I tried to bear it all on my own. I didn't talk to anybody about it, not even her. And that was the result. That's awful! What happened after that? After that, after that, I... I think we'll find out up ahead. Yeah. I want to remember everything. We're right here with you. Right, you two? Thank you. <laughs> she was about to go to the principal's office for beating him up. Yep, <laughs> we're at that point. Let's roll. Also, tiny detail that I've only kind of really noticed now. Um, I'm like I expect Al to not have the bottom button done up on her jacket. Why does Raina only also only have the top button done up? I would have thought Raina would be more sensible and have like both buttons done up on her jacket. I only really noticed it during that scene. Like you can see, like Ray, like Al not having Al's only got one button done up, but so's. Raina, you know, I would have thought Raina would have just, you know, had that little extra sensibility about her, considering how she usually is. Right, I'm going to choose to believe that we're ready to just walk straight in here and we don't need to leave again. Because it'll be easier when we get access to more dungeons, because we can just walk to the section we're at. Whilst in this first one, you have to run the full distance if you do come back to it. Which I remember on my first playthrough, actually being concerned before we unlocked Shio, that we'd have to run the full journey of it every dungeon. So I thought it would get quite tedious to do, so the fact that you can warp ended up being a blessing. Alright, this is a group, we need to be more careful. I mean, they're very easy to knock down it seems, but still we need to be careful. Let's see if I can knock down this one as well. Yes, okay. Maybe the same jacket model, or that's Yuki's side of Reina to loosen up. Maybe, yeah, that could be um, Yuki's influence, even like beyond their memories, kind of affecting her. I mean, it's probably more accurate that it's just the same jacket model and just, you know, retextured or reworked slightly to fit um, uh, Reina's body type, Reina's taller body type. Well, no, because it's not the same one. If you look at this, um, at least in this, like, close-up, you can kind of see the um, collar is different, the pocket's a slightly different position, and the bottom of it is flatter on Al. So it is, I think, a slightly different model for the jacket. It's not just altered. So maybe it is, you know, just a little bit of the Yuki influence affecting her, letting her getting her to loosen up. Oh, I might regret this. I'm just kind of diving from fight to fight. This is the stronger variant of them, isn't it? Of the of the of the enemy, right? Yeah, the slaughter vi vigilance. This is the stronger variant. Oh, this might be a mistake. <laughs> I'm gonna choose to believe in my head cannon that um, the jacket's looser because of Yuki's influence. Then. God, we need better healing items as well. The, the, the sandwich is not doing enough. Well, 
Yeah, it probably, we can we will finish this fight, but we need to, we need to bolt after this one. <laughs> we need to bolt quick. <laughs> oh, healthy amount of experience though. Nice. Let's GTFO. And it also give me some chance to sit and make some new food. If I demons bust up the sandwiches, yeah. We said we I I. We'll be fine if we can get to the point where we can start making the group healing items, like the Rattan Basket, and then especially that Hades lunch at the end of the game. Once we get to that point, we'll probably be fine. Uh, actually, I'll make six of them so we have more bread berry spare. As long as we have group heal items, we can just rely on them. But also, especially when, you know, Shio joins and we can start benching someone. When we can put someone on support, so we can have an extra person keeping an eye out for us and helping us out. Which I'm still kind of umming and ahhing to myself when we get Shio, um, who I'm going to swap out. Because I want Shio in the party because she's also got healing attributes. But Coco is such an effective unit in the team. It's like, I know I'm going to give her up eventually when, you know, um, Hina and Hiori join, but do I really like, want to let her go that quick? But at the same time, if I replace Reyna, I'm giving up an immediate medic for someone who can't use medical skills until they are gear two. And that alone is kind of a big ask. And I don't want to get rid of Reyna, considering I want Reyna to last the duration. At least, in, I want her to last until we get Hiori, so she gets more screen time. I mean, ultimately, this could all be solved by just, you know, grinding more off screen. But I don't want to over-level it and um, deflate the whole point of the challenge too much. Because Lord knows, in the main playthrough, we hit level 50 pretty damn early. We still had quite a bit to go before we reached the end when we hit the level cap. We'll see. We've got, you know, a while yet before we have to worry about that too much. Ah, oh, damn it. I was trying to squeeze in. Yeah, and that's going to be a lot more work to try and break through it. Hey, sandwich! <laughs> we give Al from a teach the healing skill, can't remember which one, but I, I have a healing skill now. Mm, yeah, also we've got a shit ton of fragments from the carryover, so when we unlock the ability to equip fragments, I, I will pick up, go through that and decide what we can do from there. So like this was like, remember seeing a bunch of, I was like, gives access to this kind of skill, gives access to this kind of skill, etc, etc. Yeah, allows use of skills that recover health. It's literally a Shio one. Uh, allows use of skills have a chance of affecting paralysis. That one might be helpful. With how much we're item spamming, chance of getting it back. Remember, I picked up I had a very special experience at the Riser Hardscape. Oh, that's the one you get for beating it. Got it. Um, overheal could be helpful. That I'm kind of curious about. Being able to overheal, make it so your health goes above um, default. Uh, covering Ether and using item. Return the game. Um, after being revived for the first time. All the revival um, fragments might actually have a purpose on this playthrough compared to the original. Alright, this big guy's going to be back. Go somewhere else.
You're really not worth the trouble right now. Oh, like this little scene. Oh, an old-fashioned half. It's the first time I've actually seen one. Should we take a little break here? Please, no. I don't want to sit around a place like this for long. Oh, Rain, don't tell me you're scared. Shut it. <laughs> Ugh. You're loud even when you're quiet. What? What? Because you know what she's thinking. <laughs> okay, you're the weaker version, so we might be able to deal with you. I found if you read about um, the clinic in the database, it drops a huge hint on Yuki's condition. Does it? Ooh. To be fair, like, I I wouldn't be su I'm not surprised that it drops a hint. Considering before we even really get to Yuki's dungeon, we kind of sort of knew. Like, you know, that was like the biggest theory I was riding since like chapter four, that she probably didn't survive. And so it just dropping bigger hints towards it. It's like that. That kind of makes sense to an extent. Wait, it's the same like with um, the first memory fragments you pick up at Uta. All of them have question marks on it, which is, um, and which implies that um, the memories you're getting aren't quite accurate. They're slightly warped. And it's only like the real memories that you get later on when you return there. They don't have the question mark because they're more honest to how um, Uta actually feels. And it's not being, you know, manipulated by the sadistic side of her. Um, atrium of the hospital. It's a big hall with a courtyard in it. It's place connected to different wards. The fact that this is here means that the hospital Yuki was in must have been pretty big. Uh, payphone. You rarely see these anymore since um, we have smartphones now, but places like hospitals still seem to have some. I wonder if these will disappear someday too. Stardust on the beach. It was the same when we saw in Reina's heart's gate. Reina really must have had le left a lasting impression on Yuki's heart, but somehow it looks dimmer than what we saw before because she's dead. I also been missing one, so we can't see it all. Same lighthouse we saw in Reina's Heartscape. Yuki's memories share the same scenery as Reina's. Feeling how strong their bond is must make me, almost makes me jealous. And um, hidden beyond the scene of total desolation lay a field of glowing flowers. I think Yuki began to give up on many things as her death drew closer. But within these flowers, there's something very important for Yuki. Something that she was never able to give up on. Aww. Did you hear about that one girl? Oh, you mean Shio? Yes, I did. Always oh, seeing the boys in her class and whatnot. What a terror. I guess it's best for, uh, best that Shio is transferring schools. Yeah, I'll say. If she hit my little guy, I wouldn't have looked the other way, that's for sure. Did I... Did we ever actually unlock this? Or did I ever come back to see if I unlocked this? I don't... Recall if we ever... Because this is like a blurry texture, so that means it can vanish. I don't recall if that, and we ever came back to check if that unlocked. I guess that's something else to try and remember as we go through. So I imagine um, that'll be like the rank 8 or 9 unlock. I'm gonna alternate and whack you to try and get you stunned as well. Okay, that didn't quite work out, never mind. God, the amount of damage we're taking in every single fight. So we, we need to keep pushing the fighting, because otherwise we're not gonna get stronger and survive anything. But at the same time, it's like every single fight is just going to burn through these resources so damn quick. Oh, that's one of the big ones. Okay, we're leaving you alone. That's what I meant, but Al mentions that Yuki finds it calming for some reason in the database. Yeah, I think I actually remember reading that in the first run when he was going through it or something along that line. That's what you're talking about. So I remember finding that suspicious as well at the time. Just 
Jesus Christ. <laughs> Reina, you're the tank of the group, please. We need you of all characters to survive, you know. When we unlock Shio's dungeon, if we're below the level cap like we were on the first run, unlike last time where I'm just going to brave it and hop in, we're going to come back here and grind a little. Just throwing it out there. I want Because if we're below the level cap, or the level requirements, or you know, recommended, or whatever you want to call it, I think we're going to notice it a lot more. I think it's going to rip our heads off. Go on out, put your back into it. I like that in the final dungeon, there's a point where you go to push and you every single person has to join in because it's too big. That I thought was kind of cute. Uh, so, facilities. No, I always go to facilities, it's locations. Nurse's office. Nurse's office reeks of an antiseptic. It's equipped well enough to take care of light injuries. This place makes me uncomfortable, but Yuki seems to find it calming. Yeah, hmm. Hmm. <laughs> Oh, this is what this is the big variant, isn't it? And I just and I just got showed up and went, yeah, I'll fight him. I just oh no. Hang on. I need to remember it's not wise at all to try, try and take on these big guys because they are brutal. I need you to survive at all costs. I'm going to give Ow! Oh, <laughs> defense boost. <laughs> oh, I'll survive, please. <laughs> Ouch, I need some healing. <laughs> yeah, no kidding, Al. <laughs> we're already this low on sandwiches. This is why I made like 20 odd, because I knew we'd just burn through my lightning pace trying to get through this. Oh, we've got that. Okay, it's just. This is like the last proper enemy. Nice, I'm gonna immediately try and make the others beeline for the other one and knock them down to avoid much damage. So you go for that one. <laughs> yeah, I'm dreading the boss. That's why I'm gonna to get to the boss and then we're leaving to stock up on resources again. Because I'm I'm kind of dreading the boss a little bit. I doubt it would actually be too bad because you know it's like it'll be one enemy and we can focus it down and figure it out and whatnot. The bosses I'm dreading are the ones later on where they have ads, you know, where they have like one or two extras with them at all times. They're the bosses I'm dreading on Death Wish. I think they'll be evil. It's beautiful. This is incredible. Our bodies better not stop start floating too. I kind of hope they do. How fun would it be to float around? I'm not gonna go fight you yet. You, you just, you just enjoy life. Ow! Don't know if you heard that. That was my shoulder. Kokoro, you're nice. What do you mean? You're too nice to other people. You never think about yourself. It's weird hearing Shio say this, considering like she's like the nicest, sweetest soul in the game, next to Hiyori when we meet her. That's what I mean by nice. You're nice too. You're too nice. I, I don't get it, Shio. I care a lot about you, Kokoro. I want to help you. But you need to take care of yourself. You always try so hard to bottle up other people and, and keep it... Try to not to bother other people and keep it all bottled up inside. 
Yori and Mio is also kind of tricky even on normal. Mm. And I'm also, um, the actual major bosses, the, like, the, the ones that escape from the cracks, them I'm kind of dreading as well to an extent in this difficulty. If I can't reach you, no matter how much I want to, I can't reach you. Alright, let's GTF and GTFO. Let's try and make more items. The thing is, if you don't, the sandwich is part of like the um, DLC. I think. Like, I don't think you start with the sandwich. I think you, in the normal game, you start with just a Tommy Goyaki. Imagine trying to do Death Wish with just HP gain extra small. It wouldn't be worth it. You'd have to basically just try, be trying to rely on Reina. I'm gonna use all of them because I need all the healing items I can get. We'll get the Aoife cha charge thing um, in the next chapter and then it'll be a little more manageable. And maybe you can start- when we get me able to start constructing um, uh, actual like facilities and whatnot, that will hope help as well because then we can start getting the facility set bonuses. And we might have to actually pay more attention to facility set bonuses to make sure we get boosts that really help. Actually, is there any unique- scenes that we can get right now before we head out. Like, if I put my head into the nurse's office, will we get that little scene? Nay, there is a teddy here. There's a lifesaver in this hot world. It's got ice packs, cooling pads, all kind of stuff. Nah, my trick for surviving the summer heat is um, you um, soak a small like hand towel in cold water and then wrap it around your head like a bandana it works it works like a tree I do it all the time all right time for the T time to die <laughs> time to see what the first boss is like I say that if I remember rightly it's not to, like super tutorialized but it's still sort of tutorialized this first boss so it shouldn't be too bad and I am going to keep on, like, you know, detouring slightly as we go along to try and pick up more resources. Preferably more of the, um, the bread bits, please, for the sandwiches. Preferably. Yeah, the bread berries. So now we can make three more sandwiches because we've got more than enough of the other stuff. But um, when I wasn't grinding, this is effectively what I was doing um, off stream. Just running back through the area, running to all the hot spots, picking up items and then leaving. Oh, another two. It's another five. So it's another five sandwiches we can make now. I'm going. When we get to uh, my trick is spray a spray um, a spray bottle in front of you. Wait a few seconds and then walk through the water particles and be instantly refreshed. That's a good trick. I think mean, everyone has their way. As long as it works, it works, sort of thing, you know? Like, I think everyone has their thing. Alright. I kind of want to go in at max health with full resources, so I don't really want to fight anything. I want to just get there. Yeah, that's why I waited, because I knew you were going to be looking at me. <laughs> and then when we get to it, I'm going to manual save. Um, just so then if we die, I can load it and not loot. In case it like, does the whole, like, you can continue after you die sort of thing, but it takes your items. I don't want to lose those healing items. Yeah, but I'm absolutely... I think I just need to make a point. In between every stream, I need to do a little bit of grinding. Because it's the only way we're going to get through this reasonably. So, I am going to manual save. Alright. Have mercy. But we got here relatively quick. We've only been streaming like 50 odd minutes. Oh, no, no, no. 
It's that demon! I can feel something up ahead. Can you feel something? Yeah, she... My friend is up there. I can feel the memory. Got it. I'm just gonna have to beat this thing. And also, I want to point it out again. For someone who, you know, apparently... You know, probably, presumably, didn't wield a scythe before coming here. I find it very interesting that Al knows how to wield a scythe in combat. That is a professionally trained combat stance for using a scythe. How does she know that? You know? <laughs> I think I mentioned in the last one, it is kind of baffling in like, the last playthrough. Um, how she understands like combat poses and combat positions with the scythe so elegantly. Like, what what was she up to before she ended up here to understand this? Yeah, like, am I supposed to believe that she just watched so much like anime that she just recognized it and knew how to do it? Because you can't just watch something and then do it well. You have to have some actual practice in of yourself before you can do this sort of stuff. Yet she does it like it's nothing. I think it's more suspicious than Kokoro having marksman training. If I'm honest. Are you sure? There's no way it's not dangerous. Of course we will. We're aiming for a friend. Don't worry. We'll play it smart. Things get hairy, then we'll make a break for it. Thank you. Everyone ready? She is an outsider. <laughs> <laughs> I had to read that like four times when my brain could put that together. <laughs> Alright, let's do it. Although I picked up my phone and was like looking like an old man at this web, so I was like, what the fuck? <laughs> Alright, if we get through this, we can start relaxing a little teeny tiny bit. Oh! <laughs> uh oh. <laughs> We might- this is going to be an interesting fight. Maybe she has to Goku, I've seen it once, we can do it. Maybe. Oh my god. We might not be ready for this. We might straight up be underleveled. I say no one's like, oh no. You don't hit third time. We're not winning this. I be, I'll be incredibly surprised if we somehow win this. We're not winning this. <laughs> we are not ready for this. We need to go do a bit of grinding. Alright, Reino, it's all on you. No pressure or anything. <laughs> oh no. <laughs> yeah, we're, we're gonna leave and do some grinding. Oh! Oh! You alright? That was a really tough enemy, huh? Looks like they're too much for your own strength. Time's at this call for one thing. Let's create an item. First, let's gather some nearby materials. After we made our preparations, it's time for revenge. Wait, do we have a quest for dying? We need to hold our guard when the enemy's about to attack. If it breaks our stance, it'll be hard to recover. We're counting on you. Okay. Wait, me? Yeah, you're the best at that. Don't worry, I'll keep you healed up. Oh, oh I see. There's actually unique dialogue. Can we get our items back? I don't think we did. No, if we didn't. Okay. That's... We'll... 
Oh, jeez. Reminds me of the sponsor where you're supposed to do with you when you get a secret ending. Yeah. I mean, it's cool that you don't game over. It just literally kicks you to the infirmary. And then you get a little thing, basically, of your um, of resource saying, Oi. And you get a hint. That hint being you should have... That, that hint was Owl should be more defensive. Rainer should be on heal. 40. I don't think we need 40, game. I appreciate the offer. I'll make a number of them, but we don't need 40. I've, I've been burning resources. that gr Grinding resources that much. I think we need to grind until we can comfortably defeat the dogs in the first area. The fact that we can't comfortably defeat them um, should be enough, like proof that we can't face a boss. Actually, no, let's sleep the night. <laughs> let's give these poor bruised souls a rest. Do you drop anything? I don't think I don't think we lost anything when we died. I think it does just kick you back. Because yeah, we still got a shit ton of like all the resources I've been grinding up. Oh, actually. I'm sure we had more heavy sand than that. Maybe you do drop some stuff when you die. I think we had more than one. I don't think we had much, but I think we had more than one. Ah. <laughs> uh, now we have some life in our bodies again. <laughs> <laughs> I wonder how the game over against the crack enemies would work since it's a cutscene in battle. Uh, it might put you, because it's usually like you finish a boss and then you have that cutscene and then you go back and then you fight the crack boss. So it might just put you behind, like before that other boss. So you have to do them in sequence. Like you have to beat the, um... Was it he, uh, Hina's stuff that the, the first crack boss showed up? Like you might say, for example, do Hina's boss fight again and then do it sort of thing. <sighs> what a beautiful morning. Now that I think about it, isn't it great how we're already at school the moment we wake up? Why? We can never be late. True. Now do we have any have classes to get to? Also true. Alright, back to the grind we go. Remember when, you know, like at the end of the last playthrough, I was like, hey, if they let us carry over our levels, this will be a quick playthrough. And then when I realized they didn't, I went, oh, actually, this might be a slow one. <laughs> I'm starting to feel it. I'm starting to go, oh, oh yeah, no, this might be a slower one run through of this game. I wonder which playlist will be bigger by the end of this playthrough. My Danganronpa series playlist or this. Okay, you only dropped like two experience. So I don't want to fight you. You're not worth the yes effort. The dogs only dropped like Four. And as in those blue dogs, I'm not too confident on fighting yet. Because in the first game, I did actually game over once. And I think that one did just kick me back to the um to the title screen we got there. Which is hilarious because I know exactly, I remember exactly what it was that got me killed. It wasn't even a difficulty thing. I got super unlucky that the boss literally started the fight putting poison on everyone. And it was like the fastest, most brutal poison in the world. And it nearly killed us in like 10 seconds. I was like, oh, okay. So it just started um, snowballing against us from there. I think level 11 is the next time I want to try that boss. At least. So it's going to be a little bit of grinding. But this is also a nice, um, I guess, wake up call for me. When I, between the streams, when I said, yeah, I need to be grinding, I really fucking need to be grinding. I want to, in this stream, I really want to at least get far enough to unlock Shio. So I can, because effectively, when I'm off stream and grinding, I might use characters like Shio and Kokoro just to get things moving a little bit if it suits. It's just on stream, I'll only be using that cast. 
Like, only on stream, they'll be, like, those two will be technically banned just because I used them so much in the first playthrough. Alright, let's try this again. Only one of them. Okay. Well, if there's more than one of them showed up, I'll just run away right then and there. If there's only one, there's a sliver of a chance we might win. And if we could I unlock the ability to start equipping Ow! Start equipping fragments, that'd be nice too. Okay, so we still can't fight these fucks. And there goes that. Okay, so we still can't fight these fucks at all. And there's gonna be a resource saying, Oh, he! Isn't challenging strong enemies like that a little reckless? I'd recommend just running away from enemies that look tough. But if you want to win, make sure you're super prepared. I like that resource gives you a hint every time. Every time you die, resource will give you a hint. So like that one was like, hey, that enemy was stronger than you. Are you sure that was your smartest? Whilst the boss, it was like, okay, you need to reapproach how you handle these boss fights. You know, stuff we didn't see on our main playthrough because we, I, I, we didn't die once. Let's <laughs> put me back in, coach. We can do this. So the blue dogs are still off limits. And so if the blue dogs can't be beaten yet, then yeah, the boss, we don't stand a chance against the boss. Oh, you know, it's a good thing they turn blind when you pick up an item. We're nearly in trouble there. And the thing is, there was a point in, um, I think it was Fairy Fencer F, where I ended up having to do this. With, like, for, like, the better part of a stream, I ended up just grinding. And that was because, um, that was entirely because of the game's final boss. Which is a shame because Fairy Fencer, it's it's weird, but I enjoyed it. It like it's got a lot of jank and quirks to it, but I still enjoyed it for what it is. But there's no forgiving the final boss's difficulty spike. There really isn't, especially because of how they handled getting there. That um, Tiara, one of the characters, is out of your party for most of the final dungeon, and so she can't level up. And so when she joins again for the final boss, everyone else is far higher level. She's just behind everyone. So she was like level 40 or something and everyone else was far above her. So, you know, what was once the main medic of the party now became the dead weight for the final boss. And it was such a shame because the rest of the game, although it was super difficult at points, the whole rest of the game felt relatively balanced for the most part. And then you just got to the final boss and the final boss was horrendously difficult. And I was like level 90 odd. A genuinely level 90 odd by the end of it and um, the enemy was still almost one-shotting us it was a one stupid super attack that it did near the end of the fight that for some reason would hit everyone no matter what and so it, you know tiara was doomed to die and everyone else would just barely survive and I was like level 90 odd so it was actually double the level But in saying that, I'm also aware that I played that game through on hard mode because there's a trophy for beating it on hard. And so I just started on um, hard, not the super hard extra, just normal hard kind of thing. And rode that out. And so I knew it was going to be more challenging, but it still felt kind of questionable at the final boss. It was that insane. Speaking of questionable, I didn't realise Raina's health had dropped that much. There you go.
Ooh, okay. So he's going to be leaving again after this one then. Oh, god damn it. It's a good thing it's easy enough to get out of fights. As long as someone's got a turn, you can just press the button and go. Uh, it's, it's annoying though, because it feels like I'm almost restricted. If I want to grind at a decent rate, I'm almost restricted to just these dogs. But they drop so little experience compared to the rest, so it feels so... Like, it feels like I'm taking the slowest option, but it's just it's the safest option. Actually, if I can get back to the shrine, those little, like, floating goblin head things, I forget what they're called. Maybe they will be a, um, a good pick. Maybe they'll drop decent experience and not be too bad to fight. Because we actually did okay against them, even when they were in groups. I'll try that. After this doggy, um, I will head that direction see if, and, and see if we can make the most of that. I don't mind grind streams like this. It's like there's lots of. I always keep checking that bin like I expect there to be something in it. I don't know why. I just keep on going to check it automatically. But it gives us time to talk about other stuff and just kind of chill. That Nintendo uh, Partners Direct is today. And I know some people are grumpy about it because it's not a Nintendo main direct, but at the same time, I don't know why people were expecting one. Nintendo have a habit of just doing things when they're ready, not when other people expect one. So if they're not ready to do one, of course they're not going to do one. And the partner stuff, even if it's not going to be like new Mario Party DLC, which I'm still begging for, or what the next set of Mario Kart 8 tracks are going to be, or and more Breath of the Wild 2, which I don't think we're going to hear anything else on, at least for a while, considering it was delayed. It's, it's, I still think the partner stuff will have a few things in there that could be interesting. Bayonetta 3 is technically a partner, so that could show. Uh, Mario and Rabbids, we already kind of know is going to show because the pre-orders have gone up. And I'm sure people are super excited for that. And there might be one or two extra surprises in there that will be super exciting. Hey, uh, can I take this? Uh, yep, yeah, thanks, bye. Oh, there's another bread berry, nice. I'll probably be streaming over it though because it starts at like, I think, one or two-ish? And I want to, and I want to make progress. So if this stream ends up being longer because of it, then so be it. But these are the guys I was talking about. These weird head things. Poker Park Free. I never played Poker Park. Um, I heard good things about it, but it was one of those things. When it came out, it was a fully priced Nintendo game. You know, and it was like it was just there was no no way I could convince my family to spend the amount of money they asked on something that I might not have enjoyed. You know. <laughs> right, level ten. We get to level 11, then we're going to try in the blue dogs again. If we can beat the blue dogs, I'll have a glimmer of faith that we can survive the boss. But even then, even then, if I remember rightly, like the level like recommended for the next dungeon is like 13 or 14. So I think even then, it might not. It, we might need some more grind work. I don't really know what my biggest hope is for Nintendo Partners stuff. 
I guess anything that, if there is something interesting that gets announced, because it's a partner's direct, it means it doesn't have to be a Switch exclusive. So I guess that would be it. Like, if it's just, if there's something interesting, making it so it comes to other stuff. So it's not just, it's just like if Nintendo got advertising, right? Pokemon 2 were big hits, but they never made a third one for some reason. The number three is a gaming curse. Yeah, I mean... I, sometimes it is an awkward thing, though, with like, with trilogies. I like, try to make a third one. There's an expectation after some other trilogies out there that the third one needs to have, like, not a sense of finality, but a sense of, like, severe progression. And if you don't really know where to take it beyond that, that can be really awkward. There are some games that have mastered it. Devil May Cry 3 is phenomenal. Professor Layton 3 is still my favorite game in the series. You know, like, there are some games that can do it and do it well, but that doesn't mean everything can do it. And sometimes that pressure alone can affect things. And it's also a chance of, um, when did Poker Park 2 come out? If it was in the later years of the Wii, it might have just been awkward to, to shift development to a new platform. To shift it to the Wii U or something. And there's also a chance that, you know, Pokemon did change um, quite a lot after Black and White 2 came out. Pokemon as a franchise and how it was handled changed a lot after X and, uh, when X and Y dropped. Which is why spin-offs started happening far less often. And a lot of spin-offs that were like staples that people loved stopped happening. Like there was another Ranger game after um, the third one. There was like a 3DS Ranger game. The Mystery Dungeon games radically changed their tone and approach. Uh, we never got like a, another Conquest or things like that. Like a lot of the spin-offs kind of went by the wayside. The only big spin-off I can think of that came out post-Gen 5 was uh, Pokémon. Which is still cr a crazy ass crossover to me, Pokemon and um, not done by the Tekken crew. That just, I every time I think about that, I was going, how did that happen? How did that conversation with Ferrada go to make that happen? Yeah, 2011 was black and white because 2013 was when X and Y dropped. And if you think every like other year or so would have been one, by the time it came around to 2013, that was the X and Y push where they started changing a lot of things. That's probably to do with why um, there wasn't a, um, a third one. I'd love a second eight. Uh, I would... But I'm in no rush. I don't know, it's a weird one, like... And I don't know, I enjoyed Tekken 7. But once I was kind of like satisfied and played enough of it, I put it down and then never picked it up again. And the same, and it was the same with me for Tekken 5 and 6. The only one I've come back to is Tag Tournament. So I'd rather a Tag Tournament free. And that's not to say that there's anything wrong with the Tekken games. I just don't think they're quite my cup of tea, personally. But... I would love to see Tekken come back with like a full force like restructure in the same vein even though they don't need it anywhere near as much because you know they, they hit, they've been hitting it pretty strongly for a few games now. A restructuring sort of like what Street Fighter's getting with 6. Where Street Fighter 6 is like completely diving in on the hip hop theming and living for it and giving itself an art style and direction that's different from you know 4 and 5. I'd love to see that sort of idea not hip-hop again but the same idea of like radically oh excuse me changing things for the next Tekken and I wouldn't be surprised if they do they're not all um although it's still Hirada's baby and he still produces he's not the lead director of them anymore he was actually kind of hands off with Tekken 7 a lot of people don't realize that he was the lead producer and he oversaw it but he wasn't like involved in all the technicalities of it in the same way he was some of the older ones he just kept an eye over the whole thing. Same um, how in Guilty Gear Strive, uh, Gold Lewis Dickinson um, is an interesting case of character development because uh, Daisuke had no involvement in the character um, um, moveset creation. It's also why um, Gold Lewis has such an interesting and different moveset from everyone else with the whole um, Behemoth Typhoon system. It was made because it was organized and designed by different people within the company. It wasn't um, just the Daisuke show, like every other character in the game is. Which makes me curious how many new characters in Series 2, when, when Season 2 actually starts up properly, will also be like that. 
But I'm also in a position where I'm just happy that fighting games are getting like this stupendously strong second wind the past few years. Like Arxis have always been on point, even if their netcode has only started getting good now. But it's like there was a point, especially like the 360 and PS3 generation, where your options were um, Ultimate Marvel 3, uh, Persona 4 Arena Ultimax, and that was kind of it. Like there wasn't even a Killer Instinct at that point, which dropped with the Xbox One. Blaze Blue wasn't as popular as it is now. You know, like Guilty Gear had a very niche audience in of itself. It's SF6 name a classic rivalry. Yeah, I think that'd be cool. I don't think it's happening. I think Tekken 8. I think Tekken 8's in development, but I think it's a ways off. Personally. I don't think it will drop next year. It might get revealed next year, but I think it'll be 2024 when it drops. Personally. I think um, it's actually more likely that Tekken will wait for the next Virtua Fighter. Because most of um, Tekken's lifespan is, um, is actually born um, from expanding on ideas that Virtua Fighter introduces. Virtua Fighter had the 2.5D environments where you could go back and forth. Tekken started doing it. Virtua Fighter had uh, mo-capped martial arts, then Tekken started doing it. And that's not, you know, me saying, oh, Tekken is ripping off a uh, Virtua Fighter, yada, yada. Um, Harada has made it extremely clear over the years, his favorite fighting game franchise is Virtua Fighter. He adores that franchise and always wants it to continue and succeed. And, and has admitted several times that there are a lot of things in Tekken's lifespan that was inspired by Virtua Fighter. So I think if it, if, if you know, because I know Virtua Fighter is almost definitely in development because the re-release of 5 sold insanely well. I mean, I mean, like, ludicrously well. It, it, it blew everyone's minds that this thing that they predicted would do about 50,000 units did 800,000 units. There's no way Sega's ignoring that. They're absolutely making a new Virtua Fighter. I, I think it would be more odd fitting if a new Tekken and a new Virtua Fighter came out around the same time instead. Because I always like, it's one of those things that as a kid, and I'm not as bad with it nowadays, but as a kid especially, I always rolled my eyes when someone wasn't excited for something with Street Fighter, and they'd go, oh, I'm not really a Street Fighter, I prefer Tekken. And I'm like, so? You can still, like, appreciate that, they're do that Street Fighter's having fun and doing their own thing. Like, people are so determined to make that rivalry a thing. It's like, nah, just be happy for both. You know? Like, be happy that Street Fighter's found an identity and looks super cool, while at the same time being excited for a new Tekken, if, you're, if you prefer that, you know? I'm gonna double tap on the healing just because I'm paranoid that's not enough. <laughs> Jesus Christ, that heal is useless. Reina's heal is so not good right now. <laughs> Be fighting games, I'm really happy that um, with the second wind, SF5 is unfortunate though. Yeah, if you looked into the development history of that game, like even ignoring the, um, and this isn't taking a jab at the, um, you know, the previous director of the company, um, a lot of people like blame him for what went wrong with both um, SF5 and Marvel vs. Capcom Infinite. And although, yes, some of his decision making was really weird, it wasn't all on him considering he was also the same person that gave us um, Third Strike for. And all versions of 4, you no know, Ultimate Marvel 3, even that was an 18 work, he still produced it for the company. You know, he was still good for a lot of things. It was just his mindset like went against what everyone wanted to do. He like he really wanted a very competitive focused um, Street Fighter that was very controlled. And everyone in the development team wanted to go like bullshit crazy with it. They wanted an SF5 to feel like a next gen Street Fighter, and it just wasn't. It felt just like a lesser four, especially at launch. Especially at launch. I think the state it's in now, a lot of people still act like five's the worst thing that happened to the series. And I'm like, at launch, yeah. Nowadays though, no, five's solid. Now five's got content, it's solid. And I really liked some of the later characters that came to it. 
I thought the um, Season 4 characters were really good, and I thought the Season 5 characters, outside of Luke, I didn't really click with him, were really fun. And this is coming from someone who really didn't like Oro, but I enjoyed play him playing as Oro in 5. You also gotta keep in mind, I said it before, I'm not the biggest Street Fighter person either. I enjoy the series on a super casual level. And it'll be the same when 6 comes around. So I, I'm, I'm gonna get 6 when it comes out, and I'll probably do some streams on it. If it lets us, and there's no recording restrictions, I wanna do World Tour mode and live. I wanna go through all that. I think that'd be super fun to do. Because it reminds me so much of, like, Def Jam Fight for New York on their PS2. Just probably nowhere near as crass. If you don't know what I'm talking about with Def Jam's crassness, don't worry about it. Some of the dialogue in that game is hilarious for the wrong reasons. You get into a boss fight and the opponent goes, I'm gonna cut your tongue out so I can make you lick my ass with it. And you're like, what did you just say? <laughs> it's like, what kind of taunt quote is that? <laughs> But yeah, like the PS4, the um, Xbox One generation, and like nowadays as well, like, you know, Guilty Gear Strive doing so insanely well. Um, Skullgirls is like doing better than it's ever done. Uh, Street Fighter 6 looks god tier. You know, like there's, in there's interest in it again, and they're doing new things. I mean, hell, when that um, Project L, um, you know, that League of Legends fighting game drops, I think that will be a wake up call. Looking at some of like the Japanese uh, developer roundtables, a lot of the Japanese fighting game devs are paying attention to Project L just because it's going to be a free fighting game. They're curious how the free um, structure is going to work for it. Because right now, Harada especially, Harada firmly believes that um, making fighting games free is a death sentence for them. Despite the fact that Virtua Fighter 5 did insanely well because it was free for the first month. It, it, it was free and had a bunch of D, like, DLC stuff instead. Because it's something that, um... Please, 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 leave me alone, leave me alone. Go away. <laughs> I don't want to fight you. Actually, we'll leave and get the reset. But yeah, because of that, they're really paying attention to Project L. So if Project L ends up doing super well, I wouldn't be surprised if some other fighting games either... Um, start launching at discounted prices, or straight up become um, get go free to play, and then just do cosmetics. I really wouldn't be surprised. In fact, I'm expecting Virtua Fighter 6 to be free to play when it comes out, when it's made, because of how well the free formula works with Five for that opening month. Either that or um, a discounted price. Uh, the only fighting game I'm competitive in is Fighters. Or Fighter Z. I'm casual in all the others. I'm not that great, but they're fun. Uh, yeah, I used to be competitive in P4AU, and I used to be competitive in Blaze Blue, but I've long since given up the ghost on both of them because I stopped. Like, the, even though I enjoyed them at a competitive level, I eventually stopped enjoying the game as a whole because I was so focused on getting better. And once I hit that point, I was like, "Well, I don't. I, I, this is not what I want to do." So I stopped. But I, but you can tell, like, if you watch, like, say, like, the Guilty Gear stream, I am no expert on any of them. I say it was only, like, those specific ones that I really knuckled down on and learned to understand. It wasn't a, I became good at fighting games in general, like some people are. Nah. I, 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 I still use a controller for fighting games. Like, you know, I'm no expert. <laughs> And I'm not about to start using a um, arcade stick for a fighting game either, because it's not just as simple as some people make it out to be, where it's like, oh, if you just pick up an arcade stick, you'll get better at the fighting game. Nah. Nah, if you're comfortable with a controller and you've been using a controller all your life, you're not going to be able to just adjust to an arcade stick, because that's an entirely different way of using your hands and wrists. That's an entirely different muscle memory preset you have to adjust to. You can't just do that. But it's equally why, for some people, like you'll notice like Max does it, um, some fighting games he only plays with a controller, some fighting games the moment he goes to start them up he immediately goes and gets his, um, his arcade stick. Because it's, it fucks with his muscle memory, so he has to you know, go with what he's used to. 
I'm talking about Max Minion Dude, I'm talking about that. I watch a lot of Max Dude, I said he's like the only um, Twitch streamer I'm subscribed to. I follow a bunch of others, but he's the only one I'm subbed to. So don't be surprised if he becomes the one I bring up every now and then when it comes to fighting games. Because we share a lot of similar interests. Not everything, there's some games that he doesn't really care for and doesn't touch that I love. Like Blaze Blue, for example. And I thought Under Knight was pretty fun as well. And obviously I loved P4AU. Whilst he finds them a little too anime, so he just kind of drifts on them a little bit. And that man loves Killer Instinct. <laughs> I enjoy Killer Instinct a lot. 2013 Killer Instinct is really, really fun. Don't get me wrong. But it's not my favourite fighting game, personally. But that dude fucking loves KI. And I'm like, I get it, dude. I'm happy for you. <laughs> Right, how close actually are we to level 11? 60. Okay, a, a ways off then. So I'm going to try and get to level 11 and also, you know, just continue trying to get resources here. I'll try and get to level 11. Um, then try and again at the blue dogs. And if we can win against them, I will brave the boss again. And then, like I said, at some point... Um, off stream, I will dedicate some time to really grind up. Just to make sure we have a bit more of a foot to stand on. And I have an idea of what I'll do anyway. And I'll just kind of, just to keep like the transparency with you guys on how I'm handling it. What I'll probably do, since you can alter the difficulty at any point, when I'm off stream just grinding up enemies, I'll lower the difficulty just to speed it up. Just so the enemies die quicker and I'm not going back to restock on items as much. You know, things like that. And then when, like, it actually gets to the main thing, obviously just make sure I'm back up at, um... Um... On, on Death Wish. I think it's Rate the Supers, but he's good. I don't really watch streamers at all, but I've been watching your ones. Well, I appreciate that, dude. <laughs> but yeah, it's like, it's... I struggle to keep up with several streamers. Like, with both Rain of Virus Jr. and Jeremy Dooley, both of them archive all of their Twitch streams on YouTube. So I will just like catch their stuff every now and then. And even then I don't catch everything. Like Ray for example, he's been like, going on a binge of old PS1 games recently. And it's like, yeah, they're cool and all. But I'm not going to watch the whole stream. I'm not going to watch him go spend six hours in Ape Escape 1, you know? I'm not that interested. But then every, but then like say like, I think today he's, um, do, he's playing Resident Evil 5 with a VTuber. And it's like, that'll be funny. I think that'll be hilarious between the two of them. So like that, I'll probably watch the archive tomorrow. I was gonna die, damn it. I was trying to get, I was trying to be quick. I was like, let me get someone in to use an item before she goes down. <laughs> but yeah, Max does the rate the supers, but he, he does a lot of other things. Like he's very methodical in what he talks about and like how he analyzes things. Like he got, um, he got invited to do developer matches with um, the actual Capcom development team for in Street Fighter 6. Like, he's played a lot of it. He's played something like six or seven hours of it across, like, three days when it was at the Summer Games Fest. And a lot of his time was spent against um, developers who showed him a lot more intricacies of the mechanics and systems and what they're aiming for and whatnot. And so when he got to, like, so, like getting able for him to talk about that later on, of course I shut up and listened because I was like, I'm curious about what this stuff all means and how it's all going to work. So if he has her hands-on experience with it all, I want to see it. <laughs> the only times I don't really watch, and it's no offense to the rest of the crew, he has a crew that he has around called the Yo! Video Games crew that comes on the weekend. Those streams I never bother watching because they get a little too chaotic for my liking. But a lot of his, like, normal streams... I, I tend to just kind of put them on in the background. I might not always catch them live, but I will watch like the archives on, on Twitch for a lot of them. Because some of the stuff he talks about, I find interesting to listen to. It's like a podcast, but not a lot of his streams. Like, he'll play the game, but for like, the first hour, hour and a half of a stream, he'll just talk about some things. Like, he'll just talk about, like, things that are happening in the industry, or, like, things that he knows are going on, or watch some trailers and new stuff and talk about what he thinks it's going. You know, things like that. And I find that stuff super interesting because he's worked in development before. A lot of Killer Instinct's um, 2013's trailers he made. 
If you go back and watch like any of the character trailers, he's credited. He literally made them. Like he has a firm understanding of a lot of things in the development industry. And so when you hear his perspective on it, it's 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 like it's it's better than like you know just someone who's just watches this sort of stuff or reacts to this stuff. It's someone who's actually you know been involved with it and know how it functions. It's it, there's a lot. I find a lot of it really interesting. It's like how I was talking about before about how I love behind the scenes and stuff. Like Max is good for figuring that shit out and like being able to explain that sort of stuff. I love the behind the scenes and stuff, and he just he can figure it out from his own experience and piecing together. Uh, Jim Cross good fighting game channel. He does Ultimax a good amount. I haven't actually heard of that channel, if I'm honest. The only Ultimax channel I pay attention to is uh, Milfy, who used to be Moonpoke. But recently you have rebranded to a name they were more comfortable with. Because Milfy does a shit ton of um, uh, Ultimax content. They've been branching out a little bit. Like I've seen them play a bit of a Grand Blue Fantasy Versus a little bit more. Which is still a damn shame that game doesn't have rollback. Because that game looks so fun, but I'm just not up for it. It's like it does it didn't do as well as some of the other Arc System fighters, so you know it's gonna be harder to find a match. And I live in the UK and most people are either gonna be in Japan or the US, so it's gonna be awkward and like I wanna get that game. It looks super fun. But I don't wanna put up with that netcode. <laughs> I really don't wanna put up with that netcode. It's the same reason why I haven't streamed um, P4AU again yet. Because I'm waiting for the rollback update, which is supposed to drop this summer, so anytime you want now, guys. I know it's only June, so it could be any time yet, but I'm hoping it's not. that wasn't just a bit to shut us up and they actually are going to do rollback soon. But then I'll admit, since starting streaming, I haven't watched streaming as much. And it's not because of any kind of rivalry or competition or of anything like that. I just don't I haven't had the time as much as I have to, as I used to. And when I do get free time, I'm honestly spending a lot more of it writing. I've really got back into the swing of writing my book. Especially because it's like as much as it's gonna have, like the like Demon of Zen is a dark book in in a lot of ways. Like there's a lot of points where like tragic things happen, or like there's a point where the main character Azel has to mercy kill someone, and it's like it's a very like painful moment that affects her mentally afterwards and things like that. But there is a glimmer of optimism throughout the book, and that optimism. Like if you like if you you know how much I love this game and how like optimistic this game's writing. Glimmers of that are present in my book, just not all the time. Obviously, when shit gets when shit hits the fan, they do get serious. And it is gritty in places, but I still try to keep it somewhat optimistic at points. But it's like recently, I've got to a point where there's a character drama between um, Luna and Lux, two of my characters, where essentially. Throughout the course of the book, and this, I say it's not really spoilers. I get to choose what spoilers for my book, considering I wrote it. Throughout the book, if you pay attention, you can tell that Luna cares for Lux a lot more, maybe than some, and that's the nice way of putting it. Whilst Lux has um, is so used to Luna being his business partner that he doesn't really see her as anything else. And like throughout the course of the book. There are pieces where you can see it starts to frustrate her that she, that he doesn't see her as anything other than you know just the business partner that he's always worked with and always known. And like, there's a point where she tries to tell him, but because he doesn't get it straight away, she convinces herself that well if he doesn't if he doesn't get it straight away, he probably wouldn't feel the same if I confessed or anything like that. So he tries to steer the conversation away, and it ends up making it awkward. And I'm currently writing that part, and it's really interesting to write that kind of bit, if that makes sense. Like it's it's different to like the happy ending or things going horribly wrong. It's that middle ground of something's not quite right, but you can see what it's working to to tr stop trying to make it right. But they're not quite there yet because Lux, he might be smart in a lot of ways, but he's having a bit of a moment at this point, and you know things like that. Your book is go going well. It sounds like you've everything sorted out. Yeah, I've. I've spent way too long, I, even before I put the pen to paper so to speak, I spent way too long planning it. 
It's just, you know, actually doing the pen to paper and filling in all the small pieces. I, I did laugh though. One of the things that actually um, ended up inspiring me to do more. I said before that when I was writing another series of books I ended up not publishing called Mary and Vincent. Um, the biggest thing I was complimented on is the exact same thing I complimented this game on. And it was how I handled um, a gay couple. In my third Mary and Vincent book, the main character, uh, Robin, ends up in a relationship with another girl called Lily. And I didn't treat it as anything like special essentially when I was writing it. I don't know why I'm running over here. I think since I'm talking, I want to kind of get my thoughts together. Um, I mean, it was just two people who eventually, you know, learned to rely on each other and found each other and fell for each other. And it carried on. And I just treated it like you would a normal bloody relationship. And what helped, at least in my humble opinion, is um, they coupled up about halfway through the book. So you had a good stretch of the book of actually getting to see them function as a couple. And I really enjoyed that. And so, of course... Um, I was like, you know what, if something like that happens in Demon, I'm just going to ro roll with it. And because the only reason that happened in Mary and Vincent, I didn't set out to write a gay couple. When I write characters, they start off genderless. And it's just when it actually comes to putting the pen to paper, I then give them their gender. And so a character that was going to be a lead and a secondary character that was going to be supportive were always destined to be together. It just so happened to work out, I ended up making them both female. You know? It's like that's and that was how it went, and so I kind of, I sort of, I say sort of. Azel, right from the very beginning, was always going to be a woman because it was like I had this vision in my head of how she'd look and how I wanted her to be. But every other character followed that same rule. If they started out genderless, and it's just whatever they fitted when the pen came to paper is who they became. And it's the same sort of deal where there is a character called Ellie Fee Boone, who Ellie is head over heels almost kind of goofily in love with Azel and it's how their relationship kind of functions throughout it as well where Azel is a very troubled soul who's killed good people whether she meant to or not throughout her life whilst Ellie is a naive little menace but has also kind of gone through the works a little bit in some parts of her life how those two bounce off each other and how those two look after each other and get and click and in the same vein those two click uh, like at, like those two finally couple up at like the start of act two so there's a healthy stretch of the book where you get to see them function as a couple and how they actually go about their day to day it was also fun brainstorming nicknames <laughs> maybe that make, make me seem, makes me sound like a nerd but um, I, I brainstormed nicknames for like the um, for um, Azel and Ellie in particular for way too long because Ellie calls Azel and Queen, or my Queen, or Queenie, all the time. <laughs> and that was like before they even coupled up. She just went, man, you're like royalty. And so she started calling her the Queen. <laughs> but yeah, um, they, they, I'm at the stage right now where like, I'm writing that, like, that slight character drama piece between Lux and Luna. But I'm also planning Utonis, the next country they're going to. Because when they step foot in it... It's going to be the first time in the book they've been there. So there's a lot of things I now need to consider when going into it outside of planning. Of how like, the little things are, what the people are like in this country, what the towns and cities look like. Um, the volcano that's got the southernmost, how's that? Is it active? How big is it? Um, is there forests surrounding it? Are there little um, secret dens or villages in those forests? You know, like you have to start pl plotting it out. Which is why I, you know, I've been drawing locations a whole bunch. Because the other three main nations, the characters have been to now, so they're planned out. Markzund, where they start, I mean, it's a giant desert country. And so, like, it's very grueling, there's long roads. It's like, you, if you're not travelling by horseback, you're asking to just, you know, burn yourself out. Um, Reverpool is um, the polar opposite. It's like a frozen wasteland, but it's also got the richest people on the planet, so the cities need to look more modernised, more, like officiated, more controlled. I was going to fight those dogs. And I'm going to fight this enemy again. I was going to fight those dogs at level 11. I just completely forgot. I was going to beeline shape for the boss then. You know, like, um, that sort of um, idea. And then Zenelheim is tropical. It's a whole bunch of islands. And that's also where Azel, the main character, grew up. So Azel becomes a little bit of a tour guide when they end up there. Because she knows what all the islands are. And then it's also, you know, naming those islands. Figuring out where they are in juxtaposition from each other. Like, the geography of them. Like, there's a lot of shit you end up thinking about without realising you need to think about until you start writing sometimes. Because if you don't know where stuff is to a T, how are you supposed to showcase that in your work? 
How are you supposed to explain that to someone? That something looks like this or stuff like that if you don't even know. If you try and make it obviously go along, you will eventually get un un unstuck. They'll, you'll eventually contradict yourself later on. Right, let me actually get out of here and actually go fight those blue dogs and see if I can fight them. So now it's the same thing with Yatonis. And although that's the last of the four main continents, there's two secret kingdoms that are hidden away for various reasons in the book that at some point are also going to need to be explained. Because there's Sestos, I, and Vol, which um, they've actually met a character from that. In Act 2, they're introduced to Anima and Vita, and they both come from that kingdom. Which immediately then puts in the whole, oh, this country exists then. It's not just some weird anomaly. So it puts it in the reader's mind, like a tease for the future that maybe we'll be going there. Right, let's see if we can actually stand a chance against this thing. And then I've got the Sky Scar Karokobos. Which is a floating continent that no one can reach right now because it's surrounded by tornadoes. And the Sky Scar Karokobos is the one that's got the least planning for it. I know where it fits into the story. Okay, Coco died. I didn't get on the healing quick enough. I know where it fits into the story and I know what I want to do with it. It's just, um. It's, it's, it's so far away yet that I'm not that fussed about, like, you know, plotting out the minor details of it yet. It's so far away. That's like an Act 3 area. I like you write the personality and story of a character before the gender. It makes a lot of writing traps related to writing genders not happen. It makes relationships more natural. Yeah, that's kind of why I started doing it. Um, because I liked... I, I always annoyed me to restructure my my words a little bit. It always annoyed me when it felt like the character was written to just be the man of the group, or the character was just written to be the woman of the group. You know, and it's like they have nothing else to them other than that. That always annoyed me. It's like no, there's so much more to these human goddamn beings than whether they have boobs or not. You know. <laughs> I said Azel was the only exception, um, solely because I'd had her in my mind for such a long time. But it's like everyone, they start off genderless. They don't even have names. It's usually like character A, character B. And then when it counts, okay, yeah, we're still not good enough for this. I appreciate the effort here, Reyna, but you're st it's still not happening. I think we might be strong enough to do it. It's just we got unlucky in this instance. Unless it misses, it didn't. Are we going to get bitched out by resource again? Yep. Oh, okay, it doesn't even say new takes, it just pops up saying, Hey! <laughs> just to think about it. <laughs> but then I'll also be the first to admit that, um, and I don't even mean to do it, but I do have a leniency to write more females than males in my books. I tend to have more female leads, like Mary and Vincent. Vincent was like the only bloke for like the first book. <laughs> but also the villain. Uh, Desmond, um, the actual villain of the first book, obviously that was a bloke as well. But in terms of like, the actual main characters, there was like five main characters and Vincent was the only bloke. And so I made it into like a little joke where Mary would keep on teasing him. And like bullying him a little bit. No, playfully obviously, but just kind of bullying him a little bit. And it's like, no, you're the only bloke, huh? Ah, oh, tough shit. <laughs> But I just, and I, don't, I couldn't even explain to you why. It's just something that's kind of like over the years come to me naturally. When it comes to actually, you know, slapping a gender and a name to a character, I end up making them female more often than not. Like there's a knight in Demon of Zenelheim. That's actually one of the villains who is actively hunting down the party because she's like the head knight, like the absolute, like head fucking honcho of the Marks and Army. Who's a de who's like the Marks and Army hunt demons for a living. And Azo's part demon, so of course she's on the priority list. Um, that's a woman, the leader of the whole army. You know, like, you know this merciless killing machine who's all, never not seen with a sword, an axe, and a shield on her belt, so she's good for whatever she needs. Who has enough physical strength in her to like you know level a tree if she needs to, because she's so used to fighting demons, and is so intimidating that. When Luna spots her at one point, her first thing is to whisper, "Oh fuck!" under her um, under her breath, and you, you can't be outsmarted and all this stuff. I made it a woman, so I'm, just, I'm not going to make it some kind of battle savvy bloke. I'm, I'm going to make it a woman. So Amelia was made. 
the bloodthirsty demon slayer leader of the Marxan army, Amelia. And she's so fun to write because of it. There's something really cool about writing a psycho- like, not psycho- like, she's extremely controlled and knows who she, what she's after and know what she wants to do. But the fact that she has that amount of intimidation and raw power tied to her as well just makes her fun to write. Cause it's like, no, I get to write a baddie that's cool, you know? <laughs> it's not just a Mwah baddie, it's someone who genuinely believes they're doing the right thing by being a demon slayer. Best way to bring that betrays the group, and will be a character that's evil and rough that works with the group in an uneasy truce. Um... Hmm. Hmm. <laughs> um, there's a character um, who is difficult to trust at first, and um, a lot of things in the plot imply she's going to betray the group, and it ends up not being her that betrays the group. And it's like, that. I have to kind of be vague, because I have to be careful about how I word this. Because not everything's planned out, so it's not just a matter of, you know, not spoiling it. It's that some of the intricacies might change. And I don't, and I wouldn't want to, know false advertise it to you. But it's like, the current plan is that between the, um, the, the twins from the Bizarre Kingdom, the Anima and Vita, um, Vita ends up joining the party, whilst Anima stays behind. And there's going to be a lot of things that start to imply that Vita might not be as trustworthy as she seems and maybe she's kind of crooked and evil. But then my intention is to be is that when it gets to a point where everyone genuinely starts doubting Vita, even the reader starts doubting Vita because everything's pointing to her being involved with whatever's going on, it then turned out it was actually Anima. And because they're twins, every little scene they saw that implied that Vita was up to something was actually Anima. It was just they mistook them because they're twins. And I even have it established where um, Anima has her hair in a ponytail, whilst Vita has her hair in twin tails. So the shadow they see will also have it in twin tails, so it makes more doubt on Vita. So when it turns out to be Anima was just making herself look like Vita, it makes even more of a catch. So that's not finalised, so take that with a grain of salt. Then stuff might change, but that's kind of what I'm leaning on. I do have a character in coming up as well when we get to Yotonis, who is... Um, I don't know if they're going to join the main party or if they're going to be a side character. But there's a character who um, I had an idea for how they were going to write. And it worked out because I wanted to write a character who absolutely under no circumstance could be trusted whatsoever. And eventually becomes a, 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 a friend of the group. Like someone who like you know is dangerous, can't be trusted, is not worth your time and attention. Stay the fuck away. Anything they say is probably a lie. And then I played this game and we met Uta. And now I'm like... I've got some new ideas of how I want to write that character. <laughs> if, if I dare be so bold. It's like, I've got some new ideas of how I want to approach some of the um, attributes of that character. Obviously, it won't be the same. I'm not going to rip it off. But it's like, there are is, there is some parts of that character. It's like, I think I've got an idea of how I could rework this. Because it was already established that this character has a vendetta against one of the main characters. Before that I played this game. Um, I've read they have a character as a body of a main character in another timeline and looks evil at first, but actually has a motive behind it and, it, and, and is. Yeah, that's fair enough. I mean, the classic example is Beta Life. Um, Kurumi is presented to you in the books and in the anime as the main villain of the franchise for a large number of the books. She's introduced in book three, and like she's the, always the one that gets away, always the one who's prepared to kill on a whim, the one who kills many people. And there's all sorts of things, and it's like it's only in um, like the teen books, like book 14, I'd say onwards, you start learning a lot more of like Kurumi's motives and reasoning and why she does everything, and you start to realize actually no, she's not the main villain, she's the protagonist, she's the reason why the plot even stands, and she's going to be the one that fixes everything in season five of the show. Just you know, full disclaimer: someone who's read the books, I know where it goes, because she can fuck with time, and so she will fuck with time. Um, to save Shido's life again. But um, like Kurumi, for example, like Kurumi, she's presented as the main villain because she's a, a mass murderer. She has a body count of over 1,000, for goodness sake. But then you learn like she's only ever killed um, animal abusers and rapists or sexual abusers sort of thing. She, they're the only people she ever targets. She never kills anyone else, she only kills them. And the only reason why she does it is because her spirit power is fueled on human blood. 
So she had, to, so if she, for her to even use her spiritual powers, she needed blood to keep doing it. So she decided if she's going to do it, she's going to pick on who she thinks deserve it. And because she has a really strong affinity with cats, her killing of animal abusers makes sense. She has an insanely strong affinity to cats. Like if she falls asleep in the grass, a cat will come over and prod her face to wake her up kind of thing, out of nowhere. Like she has an insanely strong affinity to cats. And her attacking and like mercilessly killing sexual abusers, it's just it's fucking just it's justice as far as she's concerned. So I'm like, who's gonna stop her? It's still morally grey because you know she's killing people, but you know. And then you find out it's like the reason why she's after she's so desperate to keep her spirit power is because she's after someone else. She's after a, a spirit called Mio. And the reason why she's after Mio is because Mio was actually her childhood friend who manipulated and tricked um, Kurumi into accidentally killing in all of her friends and family. Driving Kurumi absolutely insane to such an extent Kurumi used her time powers to manipulate the time of her memory so she never remembers her own family to live with the- so she can live with the grief of what she did. She knows what Miyu did to her, and you know that she tricked her, but she wiped her own memory of actually the, the act of killing her family. To stop herself um, going truly insane. Also, we might game over again here, but oh well. I'm, I'm just going to accept the game overs as they come at this point. And it's actually what Data Bullet, the spin-off, um, and the spin-off manga and... Damn it. The spin-off manga and the, the currently Japan-only film um, elaborate on. Uh, we're safe. But we've got adventure demons in the world. We better be prepared. Let's get some materials. Because Data Bullet, um, the main villain of Data Bullet, is something called the White Queen. The White Queen is the version, is a version of Kurumi who didn't wipe her memories and continued to go insane. Her and um, her spirit powers overcame her and controlled her, and she became um, the inverted version of herself. She became Inverse Kurumi or the White Queen. And so, so Data Bullet became a nice, like, nice, almost study of, like, what would have been. Because Kurumi essentially has a, because of her time powers, has a version of herself in every single universe and every single timeline. It's why I said, um, if a, like, if a main character dies, she'll fucking fix it. Because she'll just hop into another timeline where that doesn't happen and get them. And bring them into the main timeline. And if all else fails, you can reverse time. It created a paradox once. Like there, was, there was like two whole books um, based around trying to fix a goddamn paradox Kurumi made by allowing Shido to hop back in time to correct a mistake. Which was crazy how they actually wrote it kind of well. The, and even if the ending of the book didn't make much sense, they had to uniform the timelines in the end to make it work. So it's like things from like the original timeline didn't exist anymore. Just for the new timeline to be- the new main timeline to even function. But I'm getting way off topic. <laughs> Can you tell Kurumi's like my OG, like the OG waifu for me? Because I have so much time for that character. I think she's a fascinating character study. Of like everything she is and what she believes and what she fights for and why she does what she does. I was kind of disappointed they kind of downplayed um, um, her last ditch effort to get Shido's powers in the anime. In the book, she straight up tries to seduce him. And she does in the anime as well. Like, she locks him in a room, strips naked, and just presents herself to him to try and seduce him so she can then use that to try and get his powers off him. But in the book, she gets a lot closer to actually making it happen and, like, you know, doing the deed with him. Whilst in the anime, like, Shido turns it down a lot more and fight and resists a hell of a lot more and then eventually slowly starts to cave in and then they're interrupted. There's, like, there's a lot less of it whilst... We got to learn a lot more of Kurumi by her revealing her true self sort of thing and you literally revealing everything of her to him in the book, which isn't present in the anime. Like, you lose some of the character almost. And anti wants to save all history, but will take any measure to do it and super fund the right emotions and goals. Yeah, that's it. That's, that's it. That was um, Kurumi in um, Data Live, and it's why I adore her as a character so much. So I find her fascinating. And I think, to be fair, to an extent, Azel is an anti-hero, like the main character of my book. Because um, in the lore of my book, when you become a demon, you don't. no one starts as a demon when they're born, for the record. And the way it works is that there's a curse in the blood. 
some people are born with cursed blood and that cursed blood can awaken if you do something to tamper with it throughout the course of your life. If it awakens, you then become demonic. And that's what happened to Azel. She lived 21 years of her life, perfectly normal, and then her mother was killed. And that, um, the emotional response she had to that triggered her demonic awakening. But when you have a demonic awakening, for the first hour or so, where your body is still adjusting to the demonic blood, you have no control of your conscious. So you just go, you're, you have, your demonic blood has complete control over you. Which in the context of the book, resulted in Azel killing a hell of a lot more people. Her mother might have been killed, but she wiped her entire own village off the face of the map and branded her the title as the Demon of Zenelheim. Hence the title of the book. She is the Demon of Zenelheim. She wiped an entire village from her home country off the face of the map. And so she lives with that guilt throughout the entire course of the book. And it's like her coming to terms with it and finding a way forward. But at the same time, she wants answers for her mother's murder and will do anything in her power to do them. And because she's bloodied her hand so much before, she's more than prepared to do it again now. So she's kind of an anti-hero in that sense as well. And so by extension, all the people that are prepared to join her on her quest are equally, technically anti-heroes. Especially Ellie. Ellie falls in love with her, for fuck's sake. <laughs> you know, Ellie falls like, oh, you're a psycho killer, but I know you've got a good soul in there, really. I've seen that good soul of you. you. That wasn't you when you murdered that village. And I love the version of you I got to meet. And I'm like, okay, Ellie. <laughs> And so even then, um, Ellie's a pickpocket. It's, it's part of the reason how they even meet, because um, Ellie gets in trouble and gets um, uh, stabbed. And try and getting good because she gets caught pickpocketing, pickpocketing, and the bloke and the bloke that she tried to rob stabs her. So they find her in an alleyway, like barely barely surviving, bleeding out, and they kind of help heal her up back up to normal. How are we doing on levels? I haven't even been paying attention. They help heal her up, and then from that point onwards. Um, Al realizes that Ellie has an, has an extremely isolated and, and, and alone life, so tries to encourage her to join the group. To which Ellie, seeing that as a free invitation to get closer to um, Azel, dives on that like a debt collector. I, I, I was trying to explain it to um, my older sister, like how I wrote Ellie. It's like Ellie is the type of person who doesn't need an invitation to like get super close to anyone if that sort of thing like she she is like one of those people who just is friends with everyone if she can but is extremely not annoying but she can definitely get that way sometimes because she's always super bubbly she's super high energetic she's always platonically flirting with everyone or like bigging herself up slightly like, if you, like, pointed out a flower, wow, that's beautiful, Ellie would go, thanks. Like, she's that kind of, like, always a little bit full of herself, but never too insulting. And it's like, trying to write that character without ever crossing the line of making her just annoying is a challenge in of itself, but because of how I've been doing it, I, at least in my extremely biased, I wrote the book, so of course I say it this way, opinion, love writing her. I adore writing the whole cast, and it's how it should be. If you're ever going to write something, enjoy what you're doing for fuck's sake. I know that sounds obvious, but, you know, if you don't enjoy doing it, write something else. If there's a scene in a book that you're not keen on, don't force yourself to do it because you think other people will like it. Do it because you enjoy it. It's how I've written all of my books. You know, I'm actually going to... For the sake of seeing how far we get and trying to make some progress because we've been grinding for an hour now, I'm going to go try and fight that boss again. I don't have high hopes, don't get me wrong, but I'm just going to try and give him another go just to see how it goes. I don't have high hopes. I just need to get in, and then as soon as we can, immediately use, like, to drop the defense boost items on people, and then just see how it goes from there. Because if we can win now, we can start the dates, and I can worry about grinding some other time. Alright, I'm gonna manual save again. And 
I also enjoy, like, it was a struggle when I first started writing, having multiple main characters. Oh, you don't even do the cutscene again. You just go fight the thing. You just run up to him and fight the thing after you see the scene once. Interesting. <laughs> Alright, let's try this again. Uh, knock down boost. Well, ow, please. Ow. And then, I need to get everyone to level 2, I feel, and then we can start trying to worry about everything else. Heal her, please. That's okay, we've got time to burn. We gotta be wary though that that still hits like a truck. Even with the shield. Oh, it pushed it back. I'm glad I waited then. Alright, this is still gonna hurt. As we saw when he was level 9. Jesus. I need to try and make a weakness. Um you do that. You top up Kokoro because you've got the lowest defense. Do your charge up again. Give me some room to breathe. <sighs> ah, shit. She's knocked down. I knew that was coming. I saw the crack earlier. Creepy tells a lot of the character I'm writing, which is cool. My character is the Keeper of Time in history who took Goku's mum's body to get strong enough to protect history. Fuck. Okay, yeah, that sounds interesting. Uh, go for it, dude. I am paranoid for Owl's survival, so I'm going to panic heal and hope that she still lives this. She wouldn't have lived that. I'm glad I did that then. Reino, I need you to survive at all costs. Ow, oh, fuck. Now we're in trouble. Next time it does a charge up, we're fucked. Okay, not yet then. Not yet then. Nah, not yet then. We gave it a good go. Need another level, maybe. We definitely got further though. We we weren't like in immediate trouble, so we're definitely making progress. It's just it's stacking against us too much still. But I'm glad we tested. So now we have a bit more of um, an idea of where we stand. Kurumi is also another reason why I really want a data life fighting game. Because um, she has a unique time-based power for each hour of the clock. And each one does a different thing, has a different command, and has different results. Like, she can revert time on others, revert time for herself, revert time of memory, um, revert events. She has a bullet that, um, that if she uses it can send someone back in time. However, it can have extremely disastrous results, so she didn't want to use it on herself to send herself back to a time before... Uh, Mio tricked her into killing her family. She wanted to find an experiment first and the first experiment she did led to a time paradox So she was a little more wary of it She can make time barriers. She can manipulate time to make clones of herself Like I said a version of Kurumi exists in every single timeline and every single universe because of those time powers She um, she makes um, like these mirror clones of herself through time manipulation And it's all because of her spirits that she's associated with Zafkiel she summons Zaf Kiel and it's this giant ass clock demon that summons that comes behind her and then she absorbs the power from that to use it. But how much power she can use at one time is present in her left eye. Her left eye is a yellow clock. 
um, the clock on it, if it says 12 o'clock, she has full access to her power. The, the later it goes, though, the more of her power it burns. So the more skills she uses, the more bullets she uses, the, le the less color she has in that left eye because the, the, the gears of the clock will start turning. Well, Shido, the main character, um, just wants to free um, Kurumi of that life. And so because Shido has the power to steal the spiritual powers of a people, he wants to steal away Kurumi's powers so she can live the life of a normal girl. Whilst Kurumi sees Shido's powers of stealing powers as something she can use to, to take down the real threat. Which is why those two are always at odds, because they both want each other's power. Well, they're not that they want each other, Kurumi wants Shido's power, Shido wants to just put an end to Kurumi's power so she can live a normal life. And neither of them are, are prepared to uh, relent. Which is why in book 16, Kurumi Refrain even exists. I think it's 16, 16 or 17. Because the whole point of that book is that um, Kurumi isolates Shido in a small pocket dimension and basically says we're not leaving until one of us caves into the other. Until one of us um, is, um, falls for the others. And that's where the, the part near the end where um, Kurumi straight up strips naked and traps him in a room and just presents herself to him in an effort to try and seduce him into giving up the powers. Even happens. Anti Anti is my favourite characters in fiction. The uh, grey morals are best talking points. My favourite characters are characters that are straight up villainous that become anti-heroes. Like Virgil in Devil May Cry. Where it's like, he's not a hero really at all. But in Devil May Cry 3, he still does the right thing when it matters. It's just his intentions are impure. And then when it gets to um, uh, Devil May Cry 5, it's him being able to accept the past and move forward. And it's actually Dante the one who can't accept and move forward. And move forward with his life and it takes Nero to step in and slap them both to knock some sense into them <laughs> speaking of at some point I will live stream some Devil May Cry's it's just um, um I broke my um my R2 of my first PS5 controller when I went through Demon's C5 Special Edition on PS5 and so it's made me hesitant to uh it's made me hesitant to play it again since buying a new controller because I don't want to break this one too because Virgil's power was too much for um, for a PS5 controller trying to swap weapons all the time so it wasn't that I broke the button it was that um, I broke the uh, spring so there was no pressure on the button But I'm also enjoying the dynamic of writing my book. Is that Amelia, who I was talking about earlier, the you know like the head guard, leader of the Marxian army, like a real big threat. Her last name is Charlotte, which is interesting because Lux's last name is Charlotte. It's his sister, <laughs> and it's like so. There's a nice like sibling-esque sense of it as well, where Lux is a demon, Amelia is a demon hunter, and we'll stop at nothing to get them all eliminated. She despises her brother. Whilst Lux, he bears that weight on his chest of like always knowing that, you know, he's not going to be able to have that kind of bond with his sister ever again. Because of how she sees them. And at some point, they will have to fight and it might even be to the death. Darchi in P4, and especially a Darchi in Ultimax, my favourite example of a pure villain being anti-hero. Yeah, because a Darchi does the right thing at the end in both P4 and Ultimax. He murders innocent girls for extremely selfish and idiotic reasons. But he's written well as that villain, and the way he finds his way to make amends and accept his loss at the end is interesting. It doesn't absolve him of his crimes, not even remotely. Uh oh, I might I might just run away from this fight if I'm honest. I think this might this might be a bad shout to do. <laughs> but I still found him an interesting villain, and like I said I, I know it's a hot take, but I find him more interesting than a catchy in five. I think um, Adachi was a better written idea of the whole, um, like uh, an other side of the coin kind of villain, where it's like there's a lot, in, a lot familiar between them. Oh shit, rain is done. Okay, we're leaving. 
If our healer's dead, we're done. We're leaving. We're getting the G we're GTFO. Let's go. Fuck off. Let's go. Let's leave. If our healer's down, we don't have a chance. We're, we're, we're out of here. And certainly more enjoyable than... The, the, what are those guys in Persona 3? Like, the, the not Jesus dude in June. I always forget the first guys dude. And it's like, they just show up every now and then. Try and act all suspicious. Like, say weird shit and then vanish again. You're like, okay, cool. Thanks for existing. <laughs> You're like the least interesting villains in the series. <laughs> And Ms. Amelia is not even in the main the main antagonist of the book, at least for the most part. Um, it's the person um, Hazel is after, the person who murdered her mother. That's the main villain of the book. It's just the first attempt she gets to get at that person ends in failure and ends in her very nearly dying because she gets poisoned. And so they have to retreat and take it from another angle and that's what results in more of the globe trotting. Because they realise that there are these creatures around the world that are directly influencing the villain. And so if they can hunt them down and kill them, it will weaken him. And so then they can have a better opportunity at getting at him. And hopefully discover the truth of why he killed um, Azor's mother in the first place. Oh, fuck it. I'm feeling dumb again. Let's go try and fight these guys again, see if we stand even a remote chance. I'd like to beat one of these guys, because if we can beat one of them, that gives me some hope that we might actually beat the boss this stream. So I feel like we've been, we're going to be here all stream at this rate, and I refuse to. I want to finish the... I want to beat that boss before, um, before the end of this stream. Strager. Yeah, that Strager. I, I really didn't care for them at all. Oh, I was hoping I could tank the damage if I did that. Okay, I, I'm, I'm gonna... I, yeah, I'll say Reyna will survive that. She's got high enough defense. Should survive another one though. Oh, she didn't even get a heal off in time. Okay, we managed to beat one of them. By the skin of our teeth, we managed to beat one of them. Ah, oh, Jesus Christ. Yeah, I am absolutely, like, there's no two way around it. Also, I end up the end of the stream. Um, my priority is going to be grind. I don't want to, I won't get over leveled. Um, because I feel like that would just defeat the point of doing it on Death Wish. But holy shit, am I gonna gonna be like hitting the hitting the board kind of thing and just fighting everything, and trying to put myself in a position where I feel more comfortable to press on? Because this is insane. I really, really um underestimated how difficult Death Wish would actually be. I expected it to be tough, but I, at the same time, I'm so used to the other one that I was like, eh. I was so used to like normal that I was like, eh, I'm sure it'll be fine. I wasn't expecting it to be like this. I thought Namatame um, was really done well in P4, Mitsuo was kind of random, I wish he showed up more than one time. Yeah, Mitsuo made no sense. Mitsuo was just there to... Um, I, 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 I know why he was there, and it does make sense, it's because it's supposed to be a red herring. It's supposed to introduce the idea of just because you think right now they're bad doesn't mean they are. So then when you get to Namatame, hopefully you think along the same thread and realise that he might not actually be bad. And some of the things he said might actually make a vague amount of sense. Because the only reason why he says what he says doesn't seem to make sense is because Yosuke pushes it doesn't make sense. 
Yosuke pushes that he's getting his words mixed up and that he thinks save is killing and killing is saving. When in reality, if you take a step back and think about it, no, Namatame is right when he's what he thinks is saving. It's just he didn't understand um, what he was putting people in. It, like, you didn't understand what he was putting people into. Also, Dachi just continued to, you know, stir and stir the pots and let things play out as they were without his involvement. He got to watch the game without having to be personally involved, which is what made it so hard for him to be tracked down. That'll be really fun when we get to Ultimate. Not Ultimate, Golden, when Golden comes out on, co on, on consoles. That'll be really fun to go through the, all that stuff with Adachi again. I, I kind of look forward to that, <laughs> if I'm honest. I'm kind of really looking forward to that. I hope they have some kind of Vita save transfer, though, for the PlayStation version. I unfortunately doubt it, because Atlas don't seem even remotely interested in doing that anymore. But if they have some kind of Vita save transfer so I can like, put my Vita save on the PlayStation version, that would be good. That would be nice. Okay, we're out of healing items, so we, we officially do need to leave and go make more after this next fight. Which is perfect, we got more bread berries then. When I get to level 12, I'll try it again. Funny if he did the compass ending. No, I'd go for the true ending. But I, I've always appreciated that that was an option that they added in Golden. That you could actually side with him at the end. I was like, such a what, like, what the fuck moment when they added that, that in Golden. I was like, okay! But it genuinely caught me by surprise at first when like, um when I got to that point in Golden, that that was even an option, that they added that. Oh my god, if it feels like we're so close, it's so far away. How much do we need? 34, so like another 3 or 4 fights. Came to Dachi's number, yeah. <laughs> you literally become an accomplice to it. You become a part of the problem. And the fucking end scene, where like you take the train and like as you as the train moves, you just see a Dachi grinning at you in the distance because he knows you're in on this. And the thing is, when the game first came out, I remember people saying, "Oh, that might be the only way you can get Mitsu, um, um, Matsu blah 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 against Nagi." You know, to max up the social link. It's like, no, you can get it other ways. You can get it by going and talk to him, going to talk to him before you enter his dungeon afterwards. Try going to face him alone. God, we're going to be so. How, how are we actually looking on some of our resources? 139, yeah, we're fine on some of these. We're fine on some of these resources now. Whoops. <laughs> At least when we get into late game and I'm burning a lot of stuff for ether charges, um, we've got a lot of stuff we can burn for ether charges, you know? God, those things are so fast. I keep on being like, now nah, I'm fine, and they're just right next to me. But yeah, with my book, sorry, you, you got me. It's got it on my mind now, so I want to keep talking about it. If, if you can forgive my um, uh, ego for wanting to talk about the stuff I've made. <laughs> um, as it currently stands. In, in the end of the book, there might be either eight or nine main characters by the end of the book. Right now, there's um, five. Because um, Alice, who's another main character, is doing her own thing, so isn't actually a part of the main group. Uh, Captain Baderline, um, she's not going to be a part of the main story again for a while. 
because um, Captain Baderline is actually an ex-partner as well. Other than the fact that she's a ship captain, um, Baderline is also an ex-partner of Lux, and so to help give Lux and Luna's uh, like relationship troubles some room to breathe, I've had Baderline not be a part of the story for a while. Like I've had her go and do her own thing. There's also Elric, who is a royal guard who used to work for Reverpool, but after starting to see how corrupted they are left, who's trying to find his way. But Elric I think I might keep as a side character, because I'm not really sure what I can do with him and make and anywhere I can make him fit in the plot right now. And so I might keep him as a side character, but Baderline I'm debating having be a main. And then there's one more character, um, who is the character who's... For lack of a better word, the closest thing, like the one that's like been slightly inspired by Uta now, who they'll meet in Yatonis. And that I, pl I plan to have her be a mainstay as well. So it will be quite a uh, quite a group by the by the end of it. But it's even like little things, like when they're traveling to a new destination, even though they're in one group, it might be like say, I don't know, Azel and Ellie are, like, out front holding hands just walking their way forward, whilst um, Luna and uh, Vita are lingering a little further back whilst Lux is right behind. So when it comes to, like, actually splitting them up for conversations, I can keep the conversation of those two characters between just Azel and Ellie, or just between um, Luna and uh, Vita, you know, that sort of thing. When Yoshi calls Narukami his partner in the accomplice ending cutscene, Narukami just blankly stares back, it kind of hurt. Yeah, because you're like... <laughs> it's just guilt. It's what you're supposed to do at that point. Come on, we're so close to level 12. Oh, wasn't there another of those, those guys over here? So he was going up there and risking death? Yeah. Hi. Oh, oh shit, Reyna. Oh shit. <laughs> nice. Thank you. It, it's, it's still a long way off for the record. It's, I'm about halfway through Act 2. And obviously when I finish Act 3 and like, you know, wrap up the book, I'm not going to immediately go from finish the draft to publishing. No, there's going to be a second draft where I go back through it and see what stuff um, needs to be expanded upon, what stuff needs to be cut down on, because there is like one part of the book where even after I wrote it I was kind of like, hmm, we'll see how it goes but I might change that. There is a point in the book, there's like a part in the book where, um, uh, um I need to said Ow, holy shit, I need to said, I genuinely nearly said Ow and Uta, that's how much I've got them on my brain, <laughs> holy shit, oh dear, oh no no. <laughs> Uh, anyway, there was gen there's a point in the book where Azel and Ellie, Ellie becomes aware that Azel's only reason to live is for revenge and nothing else. So she's very callous in how she treats herself in fights and is constantly taking a lot of damage and pain and injuries that she shouldn't because she doesn't care about her life. And so she desperately wants to give Azel something to live for other than just, you know, and revenge and obviously the, um, the the obvious part is that they have a relationship together so Ellie wants to uh, Azel to feel like she's fighting for her as well and not just you know fighting for revenge so there's a point where they when they get to a village called Sistos in Zenelheim they um Vita covers the bill to have them all stay in separate rooms in an inn um Ellie sneaks into Azel's room and there's a lot of implication that they get up to some shit in the night and I even have a little fun scene the following morning where um, Luna's annoyed at them because Luna comments on how she failed to get any sleep because all she could hear was banging on the wall and it's like that bit like I had fun writing it but once I finished writing it I kind of look back on it and I'm like I feel like I could do something else with that other than just Ellie gives Azel to a reason to fight by having sex you know if that, if that makes sense like, like when I first wrote it I was like yeah that makes sense that sounds like something that they would do but then once I finished writing it, I thought back and I'm like, I'll leave it as is for now, but I might change that when I get to like when I get to the rewrite. I feel like there's a lot else I could do with that. 
I'm still like umming and ahhing on that one. Because there are some mature streaks in the book. Like I said, there is some dark stuff. Like there's a point in Act 1 where Azor has to mercy kill someone. And it really weighs on her mind because it's different from killing an enemy or, you know, act like being out of control in a demon form. She has to voluntarily choose to put someone out of their misery who's an innocent person and she just, it plays with her mind a lot. So it's like there is mature, mature and dark stuff in it already, but it's like that little bit, or even on like for the, the first draft, I'm kind of umming and ahhing with it a lot more. Because I'm like, I, I get what it means and I like what it does, but I'm, we'll see. We'll see, I might change it. I still want it to be that by the end of it, Azel has something new to fight for, and that's for, you know, the relationship she has with Ellie, and the family, like, bond she starts to build with the group. But, we'll see. I, I, might, so I might change it, yeah, I'm still unsure on it. That's, like, been, like, the biggest question mark of my book. I was like, when I get the draft two, I might change that. <laughs> or at least reword it if I do it, do do that, to make it so there's more to, the, to it than just, you know, that. Okay, I don't want to fight any more enemies, so I want to just try and give that boss fight another go. Now we're at another level higher. I think we're a higher level now than we were when we got here on normal. Because we leveled up a lot quicker in normal, because obviously none of the enemies were really a threat, so we just fought everything. Whilst now we're having to pick and choose a little bit more, because some of them are grave threats that can set us back a bit. All right, round three. I'm back. Put me back in, coach. It's only been two and a half hours. I said it's been an hour and a half of grinding. We got here within 50 minutes. It's just everything else we've done after that's been grinding and chatting. All right, first things first. I need to get everyone to rank two ASAP, at least. Just to give us a bit more of a stat boost and defense boost and speed boost as a whole. Second. Um, I need... Heal yourself. Heal yourself. Uh, defense boost for Al. And then get those two attacking. Again, because I need them at rank 3 ASAP as well. Or get Al to get ready her defense instead. I'm going to make sure that goes in place first, otherwise I might fall behind too much. I wonder what this demon is thinking, watching Al come back each time. Well, I imagine it's more that they, like, canonically just run away when shit when it goes up to Shit's Creek too much. But yeah, it's probably like, oh, back for more, eh? Actually, I'm imagining it's more like, I won't let you escape this time. Oh, shit, she escaped. I won't let you escape this. Ah, oh, shit, she escaped. <laughs> um, I don't want Al to die really bad. If Al dies, this all starts to fall apart. Or get knocked down. That doesn't fucking help. <sighs> okay. Okay, I know what I'm going to do after this fight, though. For the sake of actually getting a move on, I know exactly what I'm going to do for this. And it's what I said I was going to do off screen. We're, I'm going to lower the difficulty just to grind, and then once we're a higher level, then put it back on Death Wish to then fight this boss. Just so we can get a move on and speed things up a little bit. This is getting ridiculous. We came at level 9, and now we're level 12, and we're still standing about as much of a chance as we did before. I mean, it's a good challenge, but at the same time, oh shit. You know? Oh shit. This is what I was talking about at the start, where I said there might be a point where if it really becomes a brick wall, like, you cannot pass kind of difficulty, and it feels kind of questionable at points, I might just not throw in the towel and lower the hard completely straight away, but it would definitely be on the debating board. But I, yeah, I'm going to lower the difficulty to just very quickly grind up. In fact, I'm going to even do that because it's even quicker. 
So it'll be lightning fast. And then we're just going to go in and rinse all the enemies. Um, try and build up. Um, so I'm going to try and go for 14 since that's the level recommendation for the next dungeon. And then back it up to Death Wish and go from there. So I've got to do something, dude. I've got to do something to try and survive. So it's just for grinding and then we'll go back up to Death Wish afterwards. When we're actually progressing, it'll be Death Wish, but just for the sake of actually getting time to move. If I super grind up and get to like level like say 14 and the boss still completely rinses me, I, I, I will make my call and blow it so hard there. Like if I like barely lose or something like that, that won't bother me because it means that we can do it. If I get absolutely rinsed like I have been with like no real chance of survival, I, I'm call I'm throwing in the towel on Death Wish because it's not going to be worth it because it will just continue on from beyond that point. You know, like it will just continue to get more brutal. And says, I know a lot of it will get more manageable when we get access to fragments. And when we get access to you know, site developments and, you know, start getting to build up characters more properly. If we understand, I'm creating getting any of the real bosses in Royal Merciless. This Kamashida's is going to spike me. Yeah, like uh, extra difficulty in RPGs, it's it can be fine if it's well handled. But sometimes it does just feel like a stat creep and that boss feels like a stat creep. It feels like a grind wall. And that's not what difficulty should be about in these games, I feel. If you're going to do a hard mode, it should feel like cause it makes you think outside the box and have to put more advanced stuff into it, not just the enemies more sh more powerful than you do one. So I'll still stick with it for a while. I'm not I'm not going to lower to normal and under any circumstance for the main journey because otherwise we're just doing the same game literally again. But I am, if it gets to that point, am considering lowering to hard. But it depends. So we'll go to try and go to level 14, and if that's still too much. Then I'll make my call. Because I, I said I'm not I, I'm not ending this stream until we win. Because I don't want to end this. I I'd feel kind of bad, especially because you know it's every other stream we play this. I'd feel kind of bad making zero progress for our whole stream and then asking you to wait till what would be next Friday. Because you know I, I don't stream tomorrow and Thursday will be more hat in time. That seems like quite a big ask for for a stream that made no progress. Oh man, this is so much easier. <laughs> Look how much damage we did. You have to like hit them like six times to kill them, and in that one, like th that enemy nearly got one shot. Uh, I know this is literally easy mode, it's literally the polar opposite, but come on. What's the worst, hardest difficulty in an RPG you've played? Um, SMT4 was up there. SMT4, um,. Boost and on the hardest difficulty of that game, boosted all enemy stats by exactly 100 points. And it was the most miserable fucking thing I'd ever played. Literally, all of their stats. And, like, you gotta keep in mind, um, the game, it's in it, SMT, um, is made by Atlas, so it's got the same mechanics and systems as, you know, Persona and whatnot. They, they don't have a cap on the stats like, um, Persona does, so it doesn't cap at 99, you can keep on going. But it still doesn't change the fact that the basic enemies went from having like 1, 0, 1, 2, 4 to 101, 100, 102, 104. You know? Like, it's, it, it's like one of the hardest difficulty. It's it absolutely goddamn insane. And apparently they did the same in Apocalypse, the direct continuation, but I've never touched Apocalypse. Um, Apocalypse is hardest difficulty. I just went through that on normal. But then they also do, for the record, if you go into... Um, if you go to that hardest difficulty, the game straight up tells you don't do it on your first run, do it in New Game Plus. You can access it on your first run, and some people have done that, and I think they're insane. <laughs> Last, yeah, 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 so you're winning if Blue Reflection is lasting longer. But yeah, so I can be patient if it's in my own time, but it's the fact that I know if I'm streaming, a casual audience might hop in, watch this, and then go, Oh, he barely made any progress, and now we have to wait a long time. Oh, you know? And I wouldn't... I wouldn't want that. So I want to actually beat this boss before we call it a day. I want to do the dates before we call it a day, preferably. That would be nice. 
I don't know why I'm avoiding these guys, but we're on easy. I keep on avoiding them because I'm expecting them to be super tough. And I'm like, hang on a minute, no, we can actually fight these guys now. And get them, uh, uh, I hope, extra experience out of them. What I might do, if we're talking about grinding and whatnot, um, when we unlock the riser dungeon, I might at least enter it to get that starting cutscene, just to make it available to grind in when I need to for Death Wish. I mean, obviously, once again, just you know, change the difficulty when I'm in there because they drop a healthy amount of experience in there. They drop a lot of experience, even in the first area. In the last area, it's kind of absurd for how much they drop, but in that first area, they drop a healthy amount. And if I can magoo my way to some of the better experience dropping enemies and beat them on, on easy, then even better. Because like halfway through that first area, there was a bunch of enemies that dropped a pretty good amount of experience, but were way harder. It also means I'm going to have to change the title of my videos if I do lower it so hard. I'll make like the second one, it's like Death Wish too hard, and then, then this one onwards be hard, and I just have it like in the chat saying I gave up on Death Wish because it wasn't fun to do, or something like that. And so it's not that it's fun to do, it is fun, it's just this one boss sucks. This one boss feels kind of um, egregious. Same reason I'm recutting enemies I've already fought in Royal, unless I recruit them or they wipe me. <laughs> Yeah, fair enough. I am curious how much longer this playthrough could be, considering I'm new detail hunting as well. So there's going to be some parts of it that are going to be, you know, longer, because I'm going to be hunting for every little scene we can. Or, um, you know, like, making sure to make sure everyone's ranked 10, because we're going to hopefully see everyone's ranked 10 scenes this one, so Al's harem will get completed. Oh god, we're so, I'm gonna, I'm gonna try again at 13 actually because I think the experience needed to level up is starting to get quite big for these enemies, you know? Like it's starting to get quite high for enemies that really don't drop much. So I think 13, I'll give it a go. Maybe Death Wish for the normal dungeon and hard for bosses. To be on Death Wish the first time. If they, yeah, maybe that might be a good plan. We'll see though. And the thing is, like, when um, I finish a hat on time, I probably won't jump straight into Curse of the Moon, the very next stream. So there will probably be a point where I will do two or three Blue Reflection streams back to back again. Just to kind of spate, like, get this, help this keep moving. And then afterwards start the next, like, the Castlevania game I plan to play. And a hat in time, I said in the last stream that I think it will be um, just two streams. But I'm debating doing that game's Death Wish as well. And if that's the case, then yeah, it'll be a lot more than two, because that apparently is quite tough and takes a while. And that's and that's also ignoring, I don't know how long the DLCs are, so they could be quite chunky as well. So it might be three or four, but you know. I'm enjoying that going back through a hat in time. I, I can't believe the game defaults to 30 frames per second instead of 60. Well, that was an insane goddamn discovery, but whatever. <laughs> Does that reset the enemies? Ah, oh, it doesn't. Damn, I was optimistic. And I think it'll be easier to grind once we're done, because we can just we'll just be able to use the wheel to warp to the last section instead of having to run the gauntlet all the way over there every time. I, I know what I'm going to rename this stream to though. And time is really charming. Yeah, I love that game. I really recommend it. It's nice to come back to it. The last time I played it was in 2017, which was before the DLCs, before any of the quality of life updates, um, before the emotes, before co-op, before definitely before 60 frames was added. 
like it was a very different game then so it's nice to come back to it for like five years later and see how much it evolved throughout its lifespan i said on the pc version they are extremely active and supportive with uh, mod support and some mods they've even made official on the pc version The game also has a really charming, um, I, we probably won't see it for a while, but in Death Wish, if you fail in Death Wish, it will ask you to try again. If you say no, it will give you like a reassuring message, like as it takes you back. Like it will say things like, um, you don't have to prove yourself to anyone. Or it's okay, take your time. Or find your peace and tranquility. Like really like trying to chill you out. Like, yeah, it's okay. It's all right if you couldn't do it sort of messages. There's even a track in the soundtrack called Peace and Tranquility. And, um... In the mute that the official, like, video for it that the company put on their official YouTube, they have all those messages, like, be on the screen, like, during the, um, soundtrack... Tra it's during that track of the soundtrack. So for people who are struggling, you do get that kind of breather where the game says it's okay if you're struggling you, you don't have to prove yourself to anyone just relax kind of thing and the voice acting's really cute when the game launched the game did have voice acting but not every single line most of the game didn't actually have voice acting it was only like in significant scenes it did it whilst it clearly at some point over time they patched in the rest of it because there was a lot more voice acting than I remember there being. Characters talk a hell of a lot more than they used to now. Which is also kind of cool when companies do that. When they actually get to clean up some of the things like even like, you know, what parts have voice acting and what parts don't. So I was expecting to be voicing everyone going into it because that's how it kind of was in, in the 2017 version. Well, it was only in significant moments there was voice acting. Like, you know, the Snatcher going, ha ha ha, fool, we're down with the mafia. Yeah. <laughs> but like the um, Express Owls um, didn't have voice acting. You know, when he's on the train, the extra owls, they didn't have voice acting. Well, now they do. Or at least if they did, um, it was only in very specific spots they did. Whilst now they talk all the time we talk to them, they always have voice acting. Oh, I should have stealthed. Just to get the extra attack. Oh well. And I hope that Gears Breakfast um, make more games li like later on, like more like independent IPs later on. I, like whether it's Hat in Time 2 or something else entirely, I'd love to see them make more stuff because it's such a fun and charming game. And I think they've got the, that kind of quirkiness in their writing down to a T. And the thing is, in the um, concepts for Hat in Time, they actually had plans that when you would beat the final boss and, you know, get to finally continue on your spaceship, the spaceship would actually go to a new destination and it would be like some time later and Hat Kid would be a little older and like she'd have like a slightly different model, but obviously that didn't make it to the final version. That was just, that's just concept, but it was an interesting idea. It's like maybe they could do that in a sequel then. Have a slightly older Hat Kid, like a Hat Teen instead. And that be the sequel, so she can be a little bit bigger, have, like, give her a few more tricks and of the trade sort of thing, and go from there. Oh, I, was, I, was, I was leaning forward, I was like, level 13? <laughs> but the fact it's taking this long to get to level 13, like, yeah, this is going to be my last straw at level 13, not 14. We're going to go in on, on Death Wish, fight it. If it's still completely one-sided with, like, not even, like, a seemingly, like, decent chance of getting through it, 
I'm lowering the difficulty to hard. I'm throwing in the towel on Death Wish for now. There has to be a point where, you know, I need to consider how, the, how we're moving forward. Let's check our items. Alright, let's do this. I'm just going to ignore everything, just beeline straight for it. I've got, I think we're good on resources, call it a hunch. That hand time is on PlayStation. PlayStation has very few Nintendo Formula platformers. It felt like a breath of fresh air to watch. Um, yeah, the surprising thing, um, I said it before, when it came out on PC, it took like a year to get on console. And even then, it wasn't on Switch. Switch was like way after. Switch was like 2019 it came out. And it was around the time the Switch release was when the DLCs that had been on PC for a while both got dropped on console. And it was just because the dev team aren't as familiar with consoles as they are with PC. So that's why the console versions were always several updates behind. And for a long while, it straight up didn't even get patches that the PC version got. But thankfully, they seemed in a better position with it nowadays to be able to do that. But yeah, I'm glad a collector fun platformer like, you know... Like something like a Mario or Banjo Kazooie does have a place. <clears throat> so why was my throat going so much? Uh, does have a place on PlayStation? <sighs> and I'm glad that people liked it and it did well. <sighs> All right. <laughs> Hello again. It's me again. Can I use a defense boosting item before we go into a we can. We that will that's probably the big thing that will make a difference here actually. Being able to actually enter the fight already with a pre-established defense boost. So we don't have to worry about it later. Alright, let's go for it. Hey, big mean and ugly. I'm gonna beat you up so I can actually start my dating harem quest, <laughs> said Al. <laughs> yeah, we do start with the defense boost, brilliant. Oh, hello there, Officer Al. <laughs> Cover a portion of damage dealt with crits, increases crit hit damage. Oh, I'm gonna wait out and see if I can do a double tap. Okay, never mind, we're gonna have to be ready for that. Really hoping she'd go. She'd, that'd be enough to put to level three. Glad I did that. Then that could have been dangerous. Oh, 
All right. Loading. There we go. <laughs> Loading. It took a second. Come on, if we can knock back this son of a bitch, we can start making some progress here. She won't survive another hit anyway, but... And her, her knock, she's nearly knocked back. That's the thing I was hoping wouldn't happen. Uh, now it's going to start falling apart again. I was trying to avoid that knockback. That knockback I knew would be the turning point. Yeah, now, now, now the fight falls apart again. Damn. Damn. We made progress, though. We got closer. We got closer. I want to give that another go on this difficulty before I throw in the towel. I think we can do it. I think we just... Not unlucky, because that knockdown was coming. We could see it was coming. I think if we can find a way to knock it down beforehand and interrupt it, we'll have it. Right, if we can interrupt it in return... Actually, what am I doing? Didn't I just... <laughs> Actually, no, I, I won't do that. I, I can't remember if I saved or not at, at, at the door. I don't think I did. I was going to say, I'm going to get there again. I'm going to save at the door so we can just load it and retry quicker. I don't think I did save and I don't want to throw away progress. If I haven't. I'm pretty sure I did. It's just, you know, that glimmer of doubt in the back of my head. Because we need an item that can do, like, knockdown boost or something. So it's not just relying on Rainer to try and bump everyone up for it. Because that's what we need. We need knockdown boost. We need to really try and push to get it knocked down. Because if we can do that, we can reset it to level 1, its gear level to 1, and we can just domino it. But the whole time it's sitting at rank 3, it's way too much of an uphill struggle to try and beat it. Even if we did get respectfully close. Not close close, but close enough. Officer Al will will make her victory known soon. We just got to get there first. The demon's time is nigh. We just got to get. We just got to cross that final hurdle. Right, I'm gonna make sure I save. So if we die again, I'm not doing this run through again. So we know we saved. Right. I forgot to put the defense boost on. Okay, I might have already thrown this away. I just remembered I forgot to use the defense boosting items. Oh well. I'm gonna ride it out anyway. Oh, I did a group wide? Of course it bloody did.
Okay. Oh, that might not be quick enough. It's not quick enough. Okay, we're going to take this in the chin. Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm going to let this fight... I'm going to ride it out as much as I can, but I'm not expecting to win this one anymore. Well, not that I was expecting to win anyway, but you know what I mean. Unless I get the knockdown right here, we're not winning. We're not winning. <laughs> oh well. That was just me rushing in too much. I need to use the defense boost. Go on, Al. You just keep slapping it and see how it goes. Okay, this isn't going to help. I hate to break it to you, girly. Actually, resource is gonna go. Oi! Stop! <laughs> uh, load. Okay, this time. I actually, use these before the fight. And then I'm gonna save again so I don't forget. Yeah, the spirit bomb here. <laughs> Rainer's top priority is get that knockdown boost on people, and then we pray that at some point we can get a knockdown on it. And then I also need to pay attention and make sure that Owl has some bar spare for when it does a charge up. Yep, so I'm going to wait. We have Ow at least. So I'm, not, I'm not talking as much, but I'm actually genuinely focusing. I'm, I really want to fucking hit this. So I think we can do it. I, I need to accept Coco's gonna die. I need to just get... Um, Yeah, I need to I need to make sure these two survive. These two are the main are the important factors. Loading. There we go. Oh, 
Oh, one. Get, get you. Oh, God. That to be enough. Oh fuck. Now we're in trouble. She's been knocked down. I don't think we're getting the knockdown. I don't think it's possible for you to get the knockdown, at least in our current situation. Oh, now we're fucked because we don't have how to um, charge. That's death. That's death. Alright. Yeah, I know. I am making the judgment call. I am making a call. Let's try it out hard. Death Wish, at least right now, is just a little too much. I just I gotta be reasonable and it's like we're not getting anything out of it in terms of like we're not getting what we need the knockdown boost I don't think we can so even see signs of cracking um the thing was just way too much of a constant it's constant threat on death wish it does way too much fucking damage on death wish it's just nah I got I gotta draw a line somewhere and that the line has been drawn and the difference is we're playing on hard Look at the damage it dealt on the Kokoro. That's radically different from what it was doing. It was nearly two shotting it. Maybe damage can return once you have access to fragments and facilities. Yeah, maybe. I mean, ultimately, there's no. There's, it's literally just a personal challenge that I'm doing this. I don't have to do this. It's just like I, I was gonna do it all on hard mode, and then um, there was someone who commented on the video who told me it's like hard mode isn't actually too much of a difference from normal once you get a feel for it, once you get a mojo for it. Whilst Death Wish is a lot more consistent, which made me go, oh, okay, I'll try Death Wish then. But look at the difference. It's night and day. We've lowered it by one stage, and the difference is night and day here. Like, we've nearly won already. You know? I'm not even worried about healing yet. We've just kind of cracked on. It's, it's going to die in the next hit. Do you, do you know what I mean? Like, that was insane, the difference. We'll see. So after this stream, it's also going to be till Friday. I have time to think about it. Whether I want to push with Death Wish, whether I want to alternate, whether I want to think about it more, yada yada. Like, there's stuff I can think about. It's just as it stands, that's an insanely tall ask. Especially because we got there at level 9. That's an insanely tall ask. Well, we finally got here, you know, three hours into the stream. We made progress. We, we did it. Wow, what's that? Seems different from those memory fragments. I think this is the end. It must be important. Oh, what was that? Oh, look at all these stop fucking dying messages. Um, good work making this far. Lovely news for you. Are you messing with us? Oh, your words, how they wound me. Oh, whatever, Lime. So what's the news? Thank you for asking. I'm sure you've noticed by now, but this world created by Miss Kokoro's both feelings and memories. 
In front of you now is a crystal made of Kokoro's memories. Behold a fragment. What do I do with it? Hold out your hand uh, and recover your lost memories. I'm sure it will help you find what you're all seeking. What do you know why I told us not to come here? That's because I thought it would be better this way, but I've reconsidered. It might actually be better if you went to lots of different worlds. What's that supposed to mean? As that has nothing to do with living here, I'm afraid I can't answer that. Fucking Lime! <laughs> I know who you are. You're a pain. <laughs> Hold out your hand and recover my memories. You're way to believe what Resource said. As my throat continues to go, this will help us find what we're looking for. I don't even have like a sore throat or anything. It just keeps on like bubbling up for some reason. Did you get our memories back? Kokoro? I'll try it. I imagine there probably are strategies and techniques that I didn't think about that I could have used that would have made that fight more manageable. In Death Wish, that I maybe could have done sort of things other than, you know, grinding. But because we're so limited that like we don't have fragments, we have to, like, weigh up when to take the risk of attacking and when not to. When we have to worry about trying to boost people's defenses with the item or, you know, do the knockout boost and whatnot. And everything was still kind of resulting in the same consequence at the same sort of point. Maybe at level 14 it would have been enough to pull us over the edge. But as it stands, that first boss is kind of a rude, a rude awakening for this. And I was like, I'm just, no, I think hard is the better way to go, at least for now. No matter where I go, we'll always be friends, right? Yeah. But you need to make more friends. Rely on other people a little. Rely on others. Okay, I'm going to change. I'll learn to rely on others. And if, I'll, if I ever meet someone in trouble like I was, I'll help them the best I can. That sounds wonderful, Kokoro. Doesn't matter how far apart we are, we'll be friends forever, Shio. Yep, all good. Ah, oh, so bright! <laughs> Her name was Shio. Shio Kasuga. Or Kasuga. Um, she was very special to me. I finally remember. Can we start dating now? <laughs> Uh, it's over? Are your memories back? Shio taught me how important it is to rely on people around me. I wanted to become more like her and help others. So I became a reflector. A reflector? Yeah, I remember a lot of things, including about the world we call home, but before that... We should get out of here, right? Exactly. Thank you for your help, everyone. Don't worry about it, we're friends. Yeah. I've changed, Shio. I wonder where you are now. Oh, you're gonna find out. I wish I could see you again. Someone special, huh? Looks like Kokoro has recovered something very special to her. I wonder what it's like. Something the matter, Al? Oh, no, nothing. It, putting that first seed of Al having some doubts and not talking to people about it. Do I have any memories like that? We're back! Ugh, I feel tired all of a sudden. Aren't we all? I bet Kokoro has it the worst. I am a little tired. Not surprising going through what you did. What a strange place. A little world created from people's feelings. Like it created from the like it's created from their heart itself. The resource said has been bothering me. It said that we should go to lots of different worlds, right? Which means there are more worlds than the far away. Maybe there are worlds with Rainer's and Yuki's memories. Oh, 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 the gift of knowledge uh, is possible. If that's the case, we need to give it another name. Huh? I don't think uh, I don't think what we have now works very well anymore. Who cares what it's called? Hey, setting the mood for this kind of thing is super important. Hey, this is pointless. I think it's a good idea. What would you name it, Al? Mm, let's see. There's the main theme again. That light number two. How about Heartscape? Since it's a land made of people's hearts. Hey, wait. What? That's what I said earlier. Don't involve me in this. Hey, I think it sounds pretty. Me too. That's a cool name. <laughs> then we'll go with Heartscape. Ignored. <laughs> 
Well, I, for one, think we should turn in for the day. I'm bushed after all that walking. Yeah, I agree. We've got nothing but time after all. Let's go back to the classroom and rest. Yay! Kokoro has got talents. Learn spear shot. Get a better recovery speed slightly. Get better attack. Please tell me you've unlocked other stuff in other slots. Damn it! <laughs> hey, Kokoro, what do you remember? I was a reflector in the other world. A reflector? So you fought the same way in that world too? Yeah. Oh, what did you fight? I don't remember that part. But I think I was fighting nearly every day. So the other world is dangerous. Wait a sec, my world didn't have any battles like that. Does that mean that Kokoro and Al didn't come in the same place? Uh, no, it's because you're part of a loop and your memories are fake, Al. It's possible that we've all come from different worlds. What's a nice upskirt? Ugh, uh, maybe, maybe they're gathering reflectors from a bunch of different worlds. But then why would you be here, Kinjo? You aren't a reflector. I'm not giving up yet. Yeah, why are you here, y Yuki? Hmm. I don't remember anything about being a reflector. Ah, uh, then maybe I was wrong. Still, there must be some kind of connection between this world and the reflectors. Do you remember anything else, Utsubo? Like the reason for us being here? Sorry, I remember some things, but it's all a bit fuzzy. That's too bad. Well, I figured it wouldn't be so easy. Oh, this is bad. My mum's gonna kill me for missing my classes. How about we look around for Rainer or Yuki's heartscape tomorrow? We might learn something new. Yeah, good idea. But how exactly do we find a heartscape? Oh, I wonder why Kokoro's heartscape appeared in the first place. That is the question, isn't it? Stick a night and think it over. Oh, there's that theme we know and love. It feels like home. It's like the theme of home. <laughs> this track. Hello, hello. Aren't we serious this morning? Anything I can help with? Oh, are you going to lend me a hand? Because I'm your super duper guide to this place. Resource, what causes the hardscapes to appear? Has that nothing to do with lip fucking... Uh, how about this then? Oh, these places around the school we don't use much. I was thinking we could probably use a cleaning. Do you have any recommendations around the school? I'd like to make the most of my time here. I mean, what have you to ask? That the place you haven't been much. Ah, library. Rooftop storage. Nurse's office. Happy trails. I see, so we haven't looked in these places much yet. Oh, Rainer and Yuki sent something. I wouldn't recommend the rooftop storage room. Last time I went, I was almost crushed under the, all the junk stacked up in there. <laughs> we know that's a lie. Do you go to the nurse's office? I want to go too. Why does Yuki want to go to the nurse's, nurse's office? Hmm. Sounds like the rooftop storage room is dangerous. What should we do? I think this is a good opportunity to clean it up. We might even find something useful. Alright, let's go check out all of them. I know how dates work. Oh, we haven't done the rank 6 scene, so we're not holding hands again. It's kind of eerie. We should tell ghost stories here sometime. <gasps> That'd be so scary. Well, I kind of want to. I wonder if this pool is clean enough to swim in. It's clean to me, it should be fine. Yeah, but the pool water hasn't been changed since we got here. It's weird thinking at this point in the first playthrough, Shio, Hina, and others weren't even in our mind that um, this was the cast and we were we were content. Yeah, we were happy with this just being the lot. <laughs> Do you think somebody cleans this pool? Hmm, well, it's full of mystery. Maybe some kind of mysterious force is cleaning this water. Doesn't that just feel a little gross, though? Yeah, maybe we should try giving it a thorough cleaning. Yeah, we could ask everyone to come help. Oh, like a scene of anime. Can we spray each other with a hose and everything? As long as you don't actually don't forget to actually do the cleaning. It's a cherry blossom tree. I think so. The flowers are all gone, so it's hard to tell. Honestly, is, is there any trees that are pink? I don't recall any of them being. Not to see them when they're in bloom. I 
Man, I wish you could walk faster a little bit. I get why they have it so you can only walk, because you know, it, it, it'd probably fuck around with the hand-holding stuff, but still. So this is the front gate. It's right on the edge of a cliff, so be careful not to fall. Mm, nothing as far as the eye can see. Maybe we could escape if we build a boat. Ah, there's no guarantee that anything is out there. I wonder if it just keeps going forever. Well, maybe we should give up on trying to leave this place. I haven't really noticed till now, but if this place really is a treasure trove of information, huh? I wonder if there's anything about this world. Only one way to find out. Kokoro's library is amazing. They have every volume of the Death God Theory. The Death God what? It's the name of an anime. These are the books it's based on. Can't believe these are at the school library. Whoever put these here must be my kindred spirit. <laughs> you really like those books, don't you, Al? Yeah, because it's because of the Oasis. It makes it so, like, glimmers of our memory are present everywhere. So because she loves those books, those books are here. What kind of books do you like, Kokoro? Sorry, I'm afraid I can't remember. But I am a little interested in these romance novels. Good choice. Let's read them sometime. And the Death God Fury 2, of course. <laughs> yeah, sure. That reminds me, have you found anything that might be a clue? Oh yeah, there are some these super weird books. Nothing written on the covers or insides, there's some decoration on the front. Do you think they're books for other characters that haven't joined yet? That's why they're blank, and they get and they get their words when the people join and they connect because it's their memories and books. Oh, I saw some like that too, and there weren't just one or two of them. Yeah, maybe there aren't as many actual books in here as it seems. I feel like I've seen a lot of real books before. And the ones I don't know are all cookbooks or horror novels. None of these books are very helpful, are they? There's something weird about this library. The genres of the books are here all over the place. I think it's revealed that Raina reads the same manga Al does and is embarrassed about it. Yeah, I love that. Raina and Al are the same like in a lot of ways. The only real difference is that Al's very open about who she is, whilst Raina isn't. Raina, like, she's... Ex like, I, the word I used a lot in the first um, playthrough was vulnerable. Raina keeps herself controlled and, like, pretends to know what she's doing and what she's after, but in reality is very vulnerable with her feelings and emotions, and so tries to <laughs> shelter a lot of how she actually thinks and hide it away, whilst Al isn't like that. Al... Al just accepts she is who she is and rolls with it. Oh, it's the teacher's lounge. Yeah, but the door is locked so we can't get in. Well, I wouldn't want to anyway. I don't have any good memories of being in there. Did you get in trouble a lot? They always confiscated the manga that I brought to school. It's only us here now, but I wonder if this school had teachers at one point. Who knows? Wanna knock on the door? What if somebody answered? But there is a part of me that is a little curious. Hey, wait, Kokoro! Excuse me. I guess no one is here after all. That's right, I'm a nerd and I'm proud of it. Yeah, Raina. Uh, that's a relief. What would they have done if the door opened and someone just looked back at them? I was like, how long have you been here? You know? <laughs> Yeah, looks like just I'd looks just like I'd expect a nurse's office to look. I'm not sure about the find any clues here. We might as well take a look around while we're here. Hey, hey, people! Did I keep you waiting? This is like the only instance I can think of of a date involving another character, and it's like the tutorialized ones. Most dates are only like with that person and no one else gets involved. Uh, did you say you were coming? <gasps> you forgot about me! <laughs> sorry, we're sorry. So what are you doing here anyway? Duh, because nurses' offices are the best. They are. 
I think the smell of antiseptic and gauze and stuff is kind of relaxing. Yeah, because it's, it's a smell you're used to, Yuki. Really? I can't stand it. I guess a little girl like you wouldn't understand the mature appeal of a nice nurse's office. What are you talking about? Oh, and look, we got a boost with um, Uta as well. Oh, hang on a minute. Mother Dearest has just messaged me. Sorry, one sec. Give me a minute. There we are. Yeah, you keep dropping hints. <laughs> uh, huh, Raina said this place was a dangerous mess, but... So he doesn't seem so bad. Oh, there's a computer! Do you think he has an internet connection? Let's see... Hmm. What's the matter? There's a drawing of a girl! What are you doing in here? <laughs> oh, it's just Raina. Don't scare us like that. I've been using this place when I want to get some alone time. That's why I didn't want anyone coming here. But I don't own this room, so I suppose I don't have a right to complain. Hey, do you mind if I use this computer? I want to see if it has access to the outside world. As long as you don't use it for anything weird. Got it. I was going to borrow it for a bit. I wonder what girl Raina was drawing. If it was just a girl from a manga, or if it was one of us. No, nope, nothing. Can't get online at all. There aren't even any files on this thing. <sighs> about how you can... Do... About all you can do on it is play around with this drawing program. That's a shame. I'll tell you if I find anything myself. That would be great. Wait. What was up with that drawing of a girl I saw anyway? Shall we continue our chat from yesterday? You mean about how Heartscapes pop out and saw nowhere? Yes. Okay, I'll, uh, that'll that work for the others too. Sure. Cool for me too. Let's be in the usual classroom then. I mean, we're right here. Okay, anyone who's figured out how to make a heartscape appear, raise your hand. <laughs> Any ideas, Utsubo? Sorry, but no. Oh. It is boring. Let's do something fun. What do you mean, something fun? Well, I guess... Ooh, I know. Let's make our own secret hideout. Huh? You can build things for all over the school and make it into our own little theme park. we got nothing but time, right? It's interesting that um, the only reason this kind of continues is because of Yuki. It, the only reason the ball starts moving to begin with is because of Al, but the only reason it keeps rolling after we hit this first bench is because of Yuki starting the, um, like the school makeover, the extreme school makeover thing. Yeah, like an extreme school makeover. 
That's a little... That sounds awesome, let's do it. You too, Hoshizaki. Shouldn't you be figuring out how to get home? Nothing wrong with a little detour. I agree as well. Right? Now that I've remembered some things, I may have a few ideas. Yay, Gokuro! I knew I could count on you! Sweet. Let's get to work then, everyone. Uh, I guess I have no choice. Ooh, I want to make a castle! That's obviously not possible. Of course it is! Right, Gokuro? Well, I mean, we make a rocket later on, so... Huh? Um, y yeah, sure. We have to believe that we can do it. Exactly, Al gets it. Though a castle is uh, totally impossible. What? Hey! <laughs> Can I actually like access new talents for anyone yet? No, because we're still not in chapter 2, are we? Oh no, it's going to tutorialize us. It's going to say, hey, make a plank. I wonder if the new, the new game plus seems to be easy to distinguish. Uh, just who knows? Who knows, dude? Who really knows? Uh, we'll have to just get there when we get to them. It might, I mean, like, it, uh, it could easily just be like the odd little thing it has implications towards the true, like the ending more sort of thing. But that's about it. Or you know, it's like more foreshadowing. That's a bit more blunt because it's you know in new NG plus, so they know you've seen it before. Alright, so I'm gonna make a building. You've gathered the necessary materials. So it's for a secret hideout, huh? What did you use to build yours, Kokoro? Let me think. I remember a few things now. Do you think you could make with these? Wooden plank and golf. Oh my god. <laughs> Let's make like uh, 25 so we don't have to worry about it for a long while. And even if not, to be honest, how many date scenes we've done, I've forgotten a lot of them. So if we just go through them, I'll probably still be laughing at jokes we've heard before anyway. Because there was a lot of dates. We did like, we did like 140 something at the end of the game. Alright, I think we have all the materials we need to build the secret hideout. Let's get the building. What kind of place should we make? The secret hideout can't be a normal building, that'd be boring. You say that, but you don't have the skills to make something crazy. Well, here's a life hack just for you. Let your feelings flow into the rings as you build. With the powers co fuck. If the powers combined, you will be able to make new stuff. Wow, that thing can do some amazing stuff. School development. Secret hideout's been proposed. I know how to do this. Yep. Yep, yep. God, we ended up keeping a hold of this place for ages, if I recall. I remember seeing this and being like, hang on, we had this for forever. We never got rid of this. God, we have so little slots. I was like, this is it. I forgot this is pretty much it. I'm going to slap that there. Make sure to upgrade facilities, you unlock them. That's the other thing we need to do, actually upgrade facilities. So I didn't really do that on the last run because I didn't really need to. I think that takes care of everything. It's a little different from how I imagined. I think we take advantage of the water and stuff and make a little beachside cafe. I could really go for some shaved ice. This is what ended up um, putting everyone's ideas together. Woohoo! It's done! <laughs> this was so much fun. It takes me back to my days at summer camp. That was a blast. Hmm. Sorry we couldn't make it the secret hideout in your heartscape. No, this is plenty. Besides, the one I made back then got destroyed. I'm glad we can complete this one together. Maybe. Maybe if the bullies never find our hideout, Shio and I would still be close or something like that. Time to get Shio in. You finished it. Our secret hideout. Yeah, the bullies can't find me if we hide here. 
Let's stay here forever. You can't do this, Kokoro. We have to leave our safe places someday. Yeah, you're right. That's why you're here, Shio. Let's go outside, together. Okay. Hello, Shio. Welcome back. <laughs> Wh who is that? When did... Huh? Why am I... Shio? Shio's joined. Yes! Yes! We got Shio back! We can actually start breathing again. Memory Express bound for that day. Shio, Shio, that's what? And look, she got added to the phone. <laughs> Why did that happen all of a sudden? What's going on? Shio, it's you, isn't it? It's me, Kokoro. Kokoro Utsubo, do you remember me? Kokoro Utsubo? Huh? I'm sorry, I, I don't remember anything. I know that I am Shio Kasuga, but that's it. No. Her memories are gone. Just like us. Who are you and where am I? Hold on a second, I think we've all got kind of confused. Why don't we calm down and go somewhere we can talk? Good idea, let's go somewhere else. I don't know why, like, I, I tried to do like the twang in Yuki's voice to make her sound a little bit more like goofy and childish. I don't know where the Britishness comes in. I don't like, you know, like, I, when I do her voice, like, I get more British than I already am with her, and I don't know why. <laughs> I don't know why, it's only her it happens. It's like, it's like, I don't even mean to, I just catch myself, like, my, the way I speak, just being a lot more like sturdy and a lot more tight on that accent. The Heartscape resource? And demons? Which you fought and then got your memories back? Do I have that right? That's right. It's just the other day. Can't say for sure, but something about that doesn't seem right. No, you're right. Hoshizaki and Utsubo are the only ones who have their memories. But what we do know is that this place isn't the world we used to live in. Um, so does that mean... We're trapped here? Uh, I guess now that you mention it, we kind of are. I never really thought of it that way. I mean, we've always had everything we needed to live here. Is it possible for me to take a look around the school? Sure, you might as well familiarize yourself with everything if we're going to be stuck here. Kokoro, do you want to show her around? No, because it's hurting her. Sorry, Al, do you think you could? Gotcha, okay, I'll show her around then. Thank you. Kokoro. Sorry, she doesn't mean anything by it. No, I'm fine, but Kokoro... Probably best to leave her be for now. She just needs some time to adjust. Yeah, I suppose so. Well, then let's get going! Okay, lead the way! I know how talents work. You don't need to explain this to me, game. Have you ever felt like something was missing? Is this the beginning of another one of your shenanigans? I'm just asking if anyone has ever felt that there was something missing from their life. It's quite a difficult question. Listen up. I'll tell you all exactly what this school is missing. Some new activities. Uh. Mm. Oh. We've made some good improvements with the Extreme School Makeover Planning Committee, but it's still lacking some impact. We need something with some real oomph. Seems like your problem. 
<laughs> Are you sure you want to say that, Kokoro? People on my team all get donuts. I agree with Yuki. Kokoro? <laughs> no, it's two against two. You're next, Al. <laughs> I won't fall for your tricks like Kokoro. As she dances around. I'd like you to be the leader of this most important of projects. Leader? Me? Calm down, Hoshizaki. Don't be tempted by the nice sounding title. Leave it to me. We'll build the bestest world has ever seen. I see it's too late. <laughs> uh, fine, I'm on board as well. Yes! So what is this plan exactly, Miss Leader? There are lots of different ways we could do this. Does anyone have something they want to make? I want a night pool. A pool but for night time. How about some fireworks? They always look so yummy. That should be something they've never done before. Or an air balloon or something. Yeah, all the DLC items. Night pool, fireworks and a hot air balloon. They're all great ideas. What do you think, Leader? Which one are we doing? We don't get this chance very often. All of them. Huh? We're going to make all of them and make the best activities this school has ever seen. The name of our mission? Extreme School Makeover Planning Committee Project Delta. Come back to eating a donut. Look how proud she is. <laughs> it never ends. Though it does sound like fun. Let the project commence. Yeah! Oh shit, the rank up scenes. <laughs> okay, now it's going to be just a, a plethora of scenes. Good morning, Al. Do you have a minute? Sure, what's up? Oh, nothing special. Would you like to take a walk with me? Sure. Then let's go then. We're going to get a lot of rank up scenes probably here. I'm really grateful for you, Al. Huh? Did I do something? So much has happened since you came. And I was able to get a special memory of mine back. I don't think that was necessarily thanks to me, though. My heartscape wouldn't have appeared if not for your conversation we had. It's all thanks to you, Al. Well, if that's how you feel, Kokoro, then I'm glad. Huh? Reina, what's wrong? I need to get into the nurse's office, but the door won't open. Did you hurt yourself? Are you okay? Oh no, I was just napping on one of the beds earlier and accidentally left something in there. Right, it is locked! I brought the key with me just in case, but I still can't get it open. Yeah, maybe the lock broke when you closed it? I guess I'll have to force it open. Okay, let's calm down. I'll go and get some help. Help? Help has arrived! <laughs> Yuki is pretty handy, so I figured she'd be able to get the door open. Leave it to me. All I'll need is a hairpin. And there we go. Oh, you did it. Ah, <laughs> shower me with praise. Thank you, Yuki. You're a big help. I appreciate it. Sorry to take up your time, Utsubo. No, Shizaki. Not at all. I'm glad we got it open. Kokoro used to be so withdrawn before, being bullied by the other kids. But she seems way different now. Maybe all the difficult things she went through drove her to change. I'd love to get to know Kokoro more. I bet you would. <laughs> okay. Oh, finally. New things. New skill to unlock. That's it. Okay, cool. Knockdown resist. Sweet. That's it. Cool. Uh, new skill to unlock. <laughs> Fucking come on. <laughs> Ooh, initial E for speed by 30. Absolutely. goddamn lootly. Do you think this is the first hospital door, clinic door that Yuki's picked with her hairpin? Maybe. Maybe that's where she learnt the first one. She used to sneak around a whole bunch in the hospital. And get in trouble a whole bunch, but learnt to look lockpick. That's always a chance. Saki, are you keeping up with your studying? Oh, this is the desk, isn't it? I want to talk to you directly. It's okay. Come with me. Oshizaki, how about... No. That was quick. I haven't even said anything yet. A study session, right? No way. This is the kind of day you spend getting fresh air. Then why don't we study outdoors? Huh? 
I'll make a desk and some chairs that we can take outside. That'd solve your problem, right? No, that's not what I meant. Yes. I'll go get the materials. Ugh. Well, at least it's better than staying inside. What? Oh, right, because we need cold sand. And we can't make more cold, cool sand yet. Oh, I was optimistic some of the old stuff would still be there, but oh well. Okay, we can't make these three for a while because we need stone blocks. Uh, can't make that yet. Um, we can make the, make the the extreme makeover rides. God, I forgot how badly you, you we need to get sturdy cloth. Jesus. There's only three slots in the back at the first. Oh. Putting that there. What's the oven one? Phew, give me a hand. What do you need? A uh, sturdy cloth. We're going to leave outside. We need somebody to protect it. Okay. Hey, let's party. Okay. Oh, it's so hot today. Sure is. Feels like we're on a tropical island. Tropical island. Sounds nice, but it doesn't feel like one. This is being a school and all. You can say that again. Oh, we can just make stuff. Stuff that'll make you really feel tropical. Like what? When I think of an island, I think of beaches. If we spread um, spread some sand in the courtyard? Whoa, whoa, whoa. I think that's a bit more than we can handle. Mm, well, how about we have... Um, what else do we have at the at beach? How about some parasols? That could be good. Let's put together some beach chairs too. Um, the kind you can really sprawl out on. Oh, sweet. All right. I can't wait to have some fun in the sun. I guess I'll make the one that we can make. And then hopefully we can get a visit. Um, we will get the thing open eventually soon. Um, my brain's frying. Um, to get the thing available soon, the um, Aoife connection. The Aoife crafting. That's tied to a quest, so we kind of need to do it first. As much as I want to put the hot air balloon down, <laughs> as much as I really want to put that down, Ah, fuck it, we'll do it, because we'll get more. You know, the only item to go out here. Which is why I don't mind getting it now, because you know we never have to worry about replacing it or anything. It's the only thing that goes out here. All right, now we can fly. Yes, I imagine flying through the great blue sky must feel amazing. That's a little surprising. I assumed you didn't like heights. What's that supposed to mean? Well, you're afraid of the dark and ghosts, so I just assumed you were afraid of everything kids were afraid of. Well, I'm not. All right, and how about a ghost story about hot air balloons? Stop. <laughs> Oh, we don't actually have access to proper dates yet, damn. I'm just running around kind of haphazardly like this because I want to see if I can um, twig more scenes. I think Coco is the only one we can get the scene to scene for yet. Because we haven't got far enough. I imagine a lot of Rainers will only really start, um, you know, once we actually get her memories back. And especially after, you know, she reconciles with Yuki. And they find each other. It's warm sand. No cool sand, though. Because this is the, the grass. The, the, was it like green and red grass or something like that? Oh, just all two reds in this instance. Dun, 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 dun. I'm going to keep going until I actually unlock Shio's dungeon to go into, so then I actually have somewhere to grind. You know, <laughs> off stream, instead of having to, you know, go back to the other dungeon. I have somewhere else I can kind of grind out once I'm strong enough. But I am debating, if I'm honest. I think I might actually leave it on hard at this rate. We'll see as it goes, but... Mm. Oh. Oh, defense, defense up on facilities. Defense up on facilities. Yes. 
I'm leaving her in your hands. Okay, and we'll work on that later. Where should I show her first? The classroom would probably be good, then probably the workroom. After that, I should probably show her the hardscape. Oh yeah, what's your talent level? Can we check that now? Yay, you're, you start level 5. Okay, came on, you were the lowest before, so we need to actually make sure we spend more time with you in this run to try and make sure you don't um, fall behind. Why did I come here? Oh, who knows? Is there any other... Oh, no, there's just the main scenes. This is the classroom we all live in. Oh, are you sure it's okay to use them like this? Okay. Yeah, no one's around to get mad at us anyway. Look at this mess. It would feel so good to clean it up. Uh, I had a feeling for a while, but are you a little bit of a neat freak? I, I wonder. I don't actually remember. The hallway is quite dirty. Uh. Well, we walk through here with our shoes on. We do clean it, though. Yes. Let's give it a deep clean and get all the nooks and crannies. Uh, okay. This is the kitchen. Is this the kitchen? We call it the workroom. We use it to cook food, but we use it to make things out of stuff we find outside, too. I see. Yeah, get used to this room, Shio, because you're going to become, like, the lead cook of this group very soon. <laughs> is something the matter? Oh, nothing. Let's continue. God, Shio, stop jittering, please. Look how much she's jittering around on the key part. But I kind of prefer it when they're holding, holding hands. Because they don't jitter as much. See, the rails just keep on going. And it leads to the heartscape? Yep. I wonder why we're surrounded by water. I don't know. <laughs> but I know the answer is somewhere further in. Let's see, is there anywhere else I should show her? Man, I'm exhausted after all that. Yes. Hey, let's have some fun. Mm? Huh? No. Let's hit up the beach cafe. You know, where we first met you. I guess you could also call it the secret hideout. Secret hideout? <sighs> Though there's no one working there, so anything we want we have to make ourselves. <laughs> hmm, that sounds wonderful. <laughs> let's do it. I was curious to see what was and what it was like. Yes. I'll prepare something for you as thanks for giving me the tour. Oh, I can't make you do that. Don't worry, I'm the one offering. Yes. Well, if you say so, that sounds great. Hi. Leave it to me. And it's also a nice warm-up for my voice to readjust to all these voices one at a time. You know, I'm not immediately diving back into Kirara's kind of voice, or, you know, the slightly rougher voice, or, like, the slightly more um, controlled Mio or things like that. I, I get to kind of ease my throat back into these voices again one at a time. Do you ever work at a place like this, Shio? Oh, and here's the memory. No, I never did. You just look like so at home behind the counter. You're like a pro. You think so? Yeah. You'd totally bring in customers. I bet all the guys would hit on you. Oh, I don't really. Um, Shio's outfit can't be changed until she becomes playable. So when we actually get access to our next, um, when we get access to our Heartscape, then we can. That was the rule that I we figured out from the last one. You can't reuse them until they actually, you know, unlock the ability to start unlocking talents for them, actually become actually like physically playable, or like in Kirara, Mio and Uta's sense have like kind of got access to dungeon crawling after they've joined, kind of thing. Not really. Hey there, beautiful. Do you like raisins? How would you feel about a date? Huh? Ow! Hey, <laughs> kidding. 
Talk Please don't tease me like that. I have no idea what options I picked on the first run. I'm going to try and pick up different ones because it leaves to different fragments, but I honest to god cannot remember. Huh? I noticed it leaves to different um, fragments that you pick up, but I honestly can't remember what ones I did. And it doesn't seem like there's a tick box telling you which one you did on the last playthrough. Thanks for the food. Would you like some dessert, Al? Dessert? You don't even need to ask. What flavor do you want? Um, I picked. I remember picking strawberry last time because grape doesn't sound nice. But I'll try grape. Do you have grape? Ooh, that looks like a no. I can make some for you. How? I got some strawberry syrup right there, and some blue Hawaii here. You're not serious. Oh, we can make it ourselves with this. <laughs> I'll just add some lemon to adjust the flavor, and then you'll have grape-flavored shaved ice. She's a mad scientist. I was thinking, is there a mountain equivalent to beachside sh and shack cafes? No. I guess a ski lodge is kind of close, or one of those places where you can rent barbecue supplies. Is that a little bit difficult? Wouldn't a mountainside cafe be fun? Uh, you should make one, Shio. You should make one, Shio. It's not a bad idea. You could start a cafe in the mountains. I could make um, tempura of the local vegetables. Udon noodles using the fresh mountain water. That sounds super tasty, but it sounds like she's describing a gourmet restaurant, not a cafe. Innocent reaction. And now the game's like, hey, this is what a fragment is. And then the doors open to us to equip a lot. As we get our Triforce. Whoa, something come out! I what it could be? A notification? Hello, hello, looks like you've got a fragment. Oh, so this is that resource you mentioned before. Yeah, if there's anything you want to know, ask resource and it'll give you the answer sometimes. Nice to meet you, Shiho. It's me, resource, your super duper ultra helpful mega cute guide. Uh, nice to meet you. Oh yeah, when did Chio join the group chat? Did you invite a resource? Nope, seems like everybody who comes to this world are added to this group automatically. Also, we're now the Heartscape Exploration Squad. More importantly, the Fragment. You've got something real special there. Um, Fragments, like the one in the Heartscape? Great memory, Al. Crystal fragments are crystallized emotions. Their feelings made physical. Emotions? Yes, happiness, sadness, you know, all kinds of emotions. I don't get it. What do feelings made physical even mean? This has nothing to do with living here. I'm afraid I can't answer that. All you need to know is that feelings and memories take shape in this world. When all those feelings power you up. You mean if we have a fragment it'll make us stronger? Yeah, exactly. Go ahead and touch it. Yes. I understand how fragments work. Okay, we're going to go through this, are we? Right, first things first, talents. I knew it. <laughs> I was just saying, <laughs> let me get some fragment slots for people if I can. Right. All right, okay. Times two. Oh, so we've got these three again, Ned. Got it. Okay, crit race. Uh, damage on combo length. That'll be good. Status elements. Increase damage on enemy. Increase combo count when crit occurs. Increase likelihood of knocking down a target. That would be very helpful. Knock it down. Uh, decrease damage taken. That could be really nice. Uh, increase the chance to dodge attacks, poison immunity. Gives a chance to survive where you would die. That's only a chance. That's all 1v1 stuff. This is um, support for the ordering. This is um, healing.
party experience game would be great. Actually, I want to give that to Reyna. The attack and defense boost, that's, that's way too good to ignore. Since I'm going to be swapping Kokoro out anyway, I might like stack her up with all the experience boosts. <laughs> defense based on talent level. That's an amazing for this stage because everyone's talent level's boosted. Oh, there's a lot to pick from here, Jesus. Um, recovery speed on skill used to be amazing. We don't have enough space. Increased defense when HP is low, that could be nice. That could be nice. <laughs> that could be helpful. I'll think about that one. Is there any that um, boosts heal and boosts healing? Would they? Be I don't know where they. What one they'd be in? Would they be in the greens? Uh, yes. Okay. It should be gear level four for that to take effect, though. I need gear level one. Oh, damn it. Oh, whoops. Sure, and then... Oh, no, we've still got more slots for Owl. I didn't even think about that. Whoops. Uh... That costs three slots? Damn. Increase attack defense when you defeat an enemy. Oh, so that's, yeah, naive reaction, innocent reaction. So we did get a slightly different one. do that get both of them up actually no we've got two defense boosts we don't need both let's find something else damage dealt when hp is beyond yada yada uh Gives a chance for HP to go to one when taking damage that would reduce it to zero. I just that one is interesting, but I'm kind of like that chance will screw me over when I most need it, won't it? Like it'd be inflicted. Got a lot of the blues are very similar, if not the same. I'm noticing. Effects of recovery. I think in database you can read about um, what you did on the date to get that specific fragment. Oh, okay. I'm not. I'm still not going to remember, but I appreciate that. <laughs> It's not, it's not going to help in the moment. It's like, okay, which date is this one? Oh, it's this one specifically. You know, that kind of idea. God, that costs free. That's so mean. But it, that'd be really good to have. You know, a big E for boost. Kinda. They say, can't use to pack your own lunch for every day before school. Let's be able to do whatever you want. 
Can I chew under a shady tree? You seem right at home relaxing in nature. No, it does not, because look, they both say the exact same thing. No, I don't think it... Unless it's somewhere else, they both said the exact same thing. So it is going to be harder. Oh, hello, Uta. We'll get to you. Unless it's, unless it's somewhere else, because that was fragments. No, that's that. That's the million and one tutorials. Ah, well. Well, that's about it, I guess. What do you think? Thank you very much, Al. Well, um, is there ever anything I'm unsure about? Do you think I could ask you about it? I still have no memory of anything after all. Of course, I'll do whatever I can to help. It's just, it'd be nice if you could ask Kokoro. Kokoro? She knows you the best out of all of us, so I think she'd be a lot of help. That was it, unfortunately. Oh, it's no worries then. Let's say we'll, we'll just try and... Magu like, some of them are obvious. Like, when it's the the night pool with Uta, we pushed her in the water and then questioned her on it. This time we'll see what happens if we don't push her in. Like, those ones are more obvious and they're more, like, prominent in my memory. Or, like, when there's a hot air balloon one with Raina, where we basically dived at her and it freaked her out, but we're going to instead going to be more gentle and just take her hand and try and relax her, just to see what, what happens there. Like, so some of them I can remember. It's just a lot of, like, the more standardised ones, I really don't. Because we saw so many of them. Like, as in, like, I don't remember what the choices I made. It's like, there's something I need to do, but I have no idea what it could be. I'm here in this world with no memories. How am I to know what I should do? <laughs> it's all... It's as though I've forgotten just um, how to live. Yeah. That's how I was when I got here, um, here too. I had my memory, but I still felt really... Lost and scared. Did did things change? To be honest, I don't know. I'm still scared, but being with those three makes me feel like I can get through it. So let's find that thing you need to do together. I may not be as helpful as the others, but I'll do anything I can. That's not true. You've helped me realize that I'm not alone. Well, I'm glad. Let's find something you can do right now. I just saw a lot of stuff we've got here. Does anything come to mind? Let's see, well... Cooking? Ooh! I saw the kitchen. I thought maybe I could be of use as a cook. Oh, that'd actually be super helpful, actually. Really? Yuki doesn't explore with us, so she's been doing most of the cooking. We'd help out every now and again, but... We'd love to have your help. <laughs> I'll do my best then. That's right, could I ask you a favour? Sure, what's up? I'd like to make something for Kokoro. Would it be alright if I use some of the cooking supplies? Ah, I see. Yeah, no problem. I'm not sure what to make though. What kind of food does she like? Mm, Kokoro pretty much likes everything. I'm sure she'd be happy with anything as long as she, um, she knew you made it for her. Something that I want to make for her. I'll help. We can think of something together. That would be wonderful. New abilities and we can take people on dates. Never mind. I think the, the game, when it said new abilities, it was like, hey, the things that you might not have checked now, you can now upgrade your fragments. moment. What's up? I was thinking about what to make for tonight's dinner, and I was thinking of having one dish I don't have very ingredients. Blah, 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 don't make very often. I seem to have forgotten the ingredients. Even my memory's back, I just can't remember. If when I had a recipe in front of me. I know somewhere you might be able to find it. Really? Then please lead the way. Turns out I was chasing a dead end. I'll ask the other members. So wait a little longer, okay? Okay, I appreciate it. Yuki, where did you find those recipes? In the library? 
There are tons of cookbooks there. Ah, library, of course. And whilst we're here, Yuki. <laughs> no, 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 no. We'll back up. Oh, that's kind of cool that, it, that, that the way they get you your hint. She can't find it with Shio, so she goes up to someone else. Okay, can we trigger some rank 2 scenes now? No, not yet, it seems. Okay, go to destination. No stealth missions yet. I think that's a little later before we get our first stealth mission. Mm. It's got to be in here somewhere, Thank right? You Thank you so much. I'll try looking around. <laughs> oh, I once had the same recipe book. Uh, the recipe I want should be here. Yeah. I'm glad you found it. What are you planning to make anyways? Hi. Chicken balatine? You can make it just by looking at the recipe. Ding dong. Alright. Hello, Reyna. There we go. I would suppose, okay. Let's go on a date. To the rooftop. Ooh. You're cleaning the rooftop storage room. Oh, mind if I join you? Fine, but try not to make an even bigger mess. Oh, really? No, no random talk scenes? Okay, we'll just go straight there then. Mm. Wow. There are all kinds of tools in here. Mm. Oh, this looks handy. I'll use it next time. <laughs> you look like you're having fun. Uh. Huh? Really? Uh. Yeah. I can feel the excitement coming off of you. I like fiddling with things like this. I want to try everything. I'm always like, ooh, it can do this too. <laughs> oh, a uh, soldering iron. I always wanted to use one of these. It's the first time I've seen Reina so enthusiastic about something. Do you mean you want to try a new Toshizaki? I think you find Coco hiding out at the docks as part of the game. Yeah, I think I went over and found her. We'll go do that after this. Uh... I can't remember what I said last time. Paint. I want to paint. I want some paint that looked perfect. For what? For the model kit. You know, those plastic figurines that you put together yourself. I found one when we were cleaning out the storage space earlier. I haven't started on it because I was afraid of messing it up. But maybe I'll take this opportunity to paint it. Make sure you file those edges down carefully. Huh? Nothing. Is there anything you want to make, Reyna? There is one thing I've always wanted to try and make. What's that? A robot? <gasps> oh, what kind of robot? I don't know yet. I've just always wanted to make a robot. What kind of robot would you want, Hoshizaki? Last time I think I said a helper robot, so I'm going to say robot boyfriend. A robot boyfriend, maybe? When I leave the house, I'll say, have a good day, don't worry, I'll hang up the laundry. And then when I come home, it'll say, welcome back, dinner's ready. You see, it's invisible on my save. I checked since last time. Oh, fair enough. So yeah, it is. You have to have it first. How oh, is that any different from a helper robot? It'll kiss me when I leave in the morning. You want that? No. Wouldn't you want someone like that to do that for you, Reyna? No. What's this got to do with me? <laughs> Why are you being so defensive? Got someone on your mind? Has <laughs> uh, Yuki just crossed your forefront? Of course not. Heart of Science. But even there, there's a little tease of it. There's that someone crossed her mind like that. Right, is Coco hiding out here on the dock? Yeah, I can see her. Because yeah, the DLC island's over there. But we can't exit till chapter 10. Hi. Yeah, I'm sorry. I need to be alone for a while. Okay. Gone before the storm. Let's go on a date. The gymnasium. Any optional talks? <laughs> Alright, let's race to the end of the hallway. Let's not, Yuki, you little monster. Rain will get mad at us. 
You say that, but it's like you're rearing to go. Mm. Wow, this place is huge. What do you want to do? Someone's excited. Mm, I guess there are only a few things we can do with just the two of us. How about tag? Come on, play tag with only two people. Why not? Couples do it. Come and get me. That kind of thing. That's not the kind of game I was thinking of. Besides, there's been more you can do in the gym. True. Look at that blank face on on Yuki. Like even Yuki's kind of like, nah, I'm good. <laughs> We can just play a ball game, I guess. Oh. Ugh, time out. I need to get my breath. Are you okay, Yuki? Let's take a break. Oh, yeah, sorry. No problem. Why well, don't you lay your head on my lap? Thanks, but I'm super sweaty. Maybe I shouldn't. Ugh. I'm done. I don't think I can stand. <laughs> oh jeez, you mean you can never hold back, can you? Well, I was having so much fun. <laughs> Me too. You always look like you're having so much fun, I couldn't help but get carried away too. No point doing something if you can't have fun with it. But it wouldn't have been nearly as much fun without you. Thanks for playing with me. <laughs> you're welcome. All right, let's take a quick break and get back to it. All right, and that's it for dates. Oh, God, God, can you remember a time when the dates were that quick and that was it and we were done and we could move on? We had that much free time. Do you remember that time? I remember that time. <laughs> it's going to... It's so crazy to think about that. Like that's it. That's the dates for this this section. When later on, it's like two hours later, we're still doing them. Oh, okay. Now it's teaching us about um. You can do the groups. Remember event where I had to pick between Reina, Koko, and Yuki, and I chose Yuki. Then Alan Yuki turned away from Reina and said, "We can." We can slack with more than two people with the cheekiest smiles. I actually picked the same thing. I remember that conversation. I picked the exact same one. Remember we got Operation Help Shio. I think I picked the exact same option. When it comes to the character op the character scenes, the ones that actually have like a character icon on the map and you have to pick between multiple people, I am going to be more conscious of um, who I pick than I was last time. The last time I didn't realize until super late on that whoever you pick, you only get talent points boost for them. Whilst now, like, if I can favor Shio, I'm gonna be favoring Shio to try and get her caught up, you know? What is it? Hi. I just remembered something as I was moving my hands. Do you mind if I make one more thing? Your yeah, new ability is this the ether? Oh, your coffee! Oh, thank god. Oh thank God, we can now we can now actually start making progress now. Cool sand. Okay, I don't need fifty odd, but I could do with a handful of them. I'll make like uh, twenty. Okay. Uh. <laughs> Jesus. Oh, and then this one's actually kind of low. Nice. Oh, I need to actually make sturdy cloth with the cool sand. I got, I got a bit ahead of myself. Hang on. Got so many resources. <laughs> oh Jesus! I, mean, I don't think it was ever a point where we had this many resources in the main run. Stop that there. I like how you've adopted more of my uh, more nicknames as well. 
But I'm not the only one that calls Kokoro Coco all the time. You call her that too. It's like such a bloody scruff pot. Ugh. Sorry, my back's starting to go a little bit. But everything together was so fun, but now... Didn't you say you would you could concentrate if you were outside? I said no such thing. It's a lot better than being stuck in the school. The fresh air, the change of scenery. Even you seem to be in a better mood, Reyna. Uh, only because I thought you'd put in a bit more effort into studying now that we're out here. Well, that's not happening. Okay, okay, I'll study with you a little more. Nice. No, I want to do this one. Can we make this the night pool? No, we can't. We need stone blocks for that. We can make the tropical and the extreme makeover variant of the tropical. Uh, this is the normal one, so I'll sit that, that, sit that there. Oh, finished! Oh, that looks really good. What's with the drinks? Now we've got a um, now that we've got a beach, we've got to have some tropical drinks too. <laughs> Let our tropical vacation begin. Uh, these chairs are all so comfy. <laughs> and that juice was the best. <laughs> Wasn't it? It's my specialty. <laughs> it really does feel like a tropical island. Yeah, great, Scruff Port's legendary. <laughs> it just came to... <laughs> yeah. yeah, but Scruff Port sticks. It makes so much sense, but oh well. Um, it really does feel like a tropical island if you ignore everything else in view. <laughs> Let's not talk about that. We're surrounded by water, so it's basically the same. Should we go for a swim after this? Yeah. Uh, maybe not this time. Mm. Yeah, I know our set effects work. Because we've got stuff set up, you get a 10% in HP and attack, and a 10% in HP and defense. Nice. Oh, we can't upgrade them yet. Interesting. There's no upgrade option here. And this one is the DLC variant. You can tell it's different because the um, umbrellas are different color. Oh, well, it's all got a slightly different shade now that I mention it. I'll think about it. And we can't make the rest at all, can we? Rare lens, azure cell, and well, everything. And yeah, okay. Not yet. Ooh, processing boost. Yes, please. Attack boost. Death God Strike and Money Maker. Obstruction boost. Essence boost. Injure boost. Maintain the pain. Cure boost. That'll be good for the sandwiches. It's, it's, it's kind of refreshing being able to keep on top of all that. Uh, yeah, HP game M and regen on top of it. Oh. Oh. What are we lacking? Is it bread berries again? Of course it is. Hang on. I mean, what was that other item? Uh. Okay. Let's make some bread berries. Since we can. And then I want to make some balloon cabbages as well. Yes. 
Then we can go crazy with this and actually, you know. Have be slightly better healing items on us. Nice. Because that one's just. That, like, this one we can use out of fights, this one can be used in fights. I've already named one of her skills Death God Strike. Yeah, she's a fan. <laughs> she's a fan. Heart of Science. Recover an amount of extra HP. We're using recovery skills and items. Okay. And we did unlock new dates from that. Awesome. Hey, can I... I want to get that item if I can help it. I don't even know what that is. A towel. Oh, okay. That can be helpful. <laughs> Destination. The desk and chair. That was the other thing that kind of got a bit weird. At the very end of the last um, playthrough, it stopped telling us where the des uh, what the destinations were called. It would just say, go to destination, tap right. And it wouldn't say destination, blah, blah, blah. I mean, in, in, in like the last couple chapters, that just kind of deactivated a little bit, it seems. Wow, you're still studying in a place like this? We're finally free from stuff like that. We're only free for now. What do you plan to do when we get back? Uh, I'm sure I could teach you the material if you wanted. I'd appreciate that. What well, shall we study? Um, we should be sure to set out a plan. That way we won't waste our time just chatting. Whoa, she's serious about this. You know, now I think about it, I think I left my textbooks back in the other world. What about borrowing one? Oh, my plan didn't work. What the heck? I don't get this at all. I wonder if Raina would say something like, weren't you listening in class if I asked? Well, not like I just magically learned it by staring at her. I'll just ask. And that's it, understand? So if you get a problem like this, you can use this formula. Oh, and you can use this little trick to... I thought she was going to make fun of me, but she's actually teaching me. Thanks, Raina. This was really easy to understand. Really good at maths. Really good at maths, huh, Raina? <laughs> Don't know about that, but I do enjoy it. There are rules and a single answer. Even if you make a mistake, you know exactly where you went wrong. Conversely, I struggle in subjects where the answer may change from person to person, like literature. Sounds like a puzzle when you describe it like that. I guess I could see it being fun. Uh, I'm exhausted. I'm going to pack it in for now. I wonder how Rain is doing. Wow, she's super focused. What should I do? Get her a drink. I'll run to the bathroom. Be right back. I got you a little something. Don't ever work yourself, okay? No, you really didn't have to, but thank you. It's kind of crazy being at the start of the game and then being like talent level 7. <laughs> Ow, let's go chill on the parasols. Th these ones in particular, not the DLC ones. I mean, what? <laughs> ah. <sighs> <laughs> <laughs> you should have seen your face. That grossed out. Uh, Yuki, why would you do that? I just got comfortable too. I know, you're, that one I remember pretending to be into it last time. Oh, sorry, I didn't mean you'd actually get mad. I uh, got you. You surprised me, but I'm not actually mad. <laughs> Oh, you scared me! Well, her skirt physics had to correct themselves for a second there. Did you see that? You know, this place feels like we're on vacation, but something feels off. You think? We've got beach, chairs, parasols, drinks, but I still feel like there's something missing. <laughs> Maybe because we can't hear the waves? Mm, yeah, this isn't a real beach after all. 
Oh, why don't we do that thing where you stick beans in a box and shake it around? Sounds just like waves. That's a thing. Nothing says vacation like sharing a box full of beans. You're right. Maybe we should look and take turns shaking it. I think she was being sarcastic. Actually, forget it. I felt sad just imagining that. <laughs> yeah, probably for the best. I know about like the seashells. It sounds like you can hear the ocean. It's just the wind passing through it. I'm going to get another drink. I'll get you one too. Oh, how thoughtful of you. I know, right? Be right back. Yeah, Sue. Yuki the Mega Cutie. I know for a fact I said that last time. So I'm going to say, tell me your name, fiend. <laughs> Who goes there? Tell me your name, fiend. <laughs> what would a dead person do with my name? For that is what you are about to become. Drink. <laughs> ah, trying to poison me, coward. Oh, yum. <laughs> yeah, got you another. Mm, thanks, Yuki. Impromptu vacation. So I know last time I absolutely picked Yuki the Mega Cutie because what what else was you gonna do? So that one I knew to mix up. It was that obvious. It's like yeah, of course I made that one. Fractional HP recovery, status elements, and ether recovery. Uh, let's make like five of these. Nice. Coffee, huh? That's what I was expecting. I thought I would make her something to eat at first, but for some reason this came to mind. Came to mind, huh? Well then, let's have Kokoro try it. Okay. Miss Kokoro Utsubo, Miss Kokoro Utsubo. What's up, pal? Miss Al is calling you. Can you please come to the workroom at your earliest convenience? Okay. I don't know why I didn't just message her personally and just use the group chat now that I think about it, but whatever. Oh, I'm here. Shio? What are you up to? Um. I'm sorry for not remembering you. Oh, I'm not going to be sorry. I'm, I was avoiding you. The thought that someone I cared for so much didn't remember who I was? It was unbearable. But I, I myself just remembered you recently. It wasn't fair of me to act that way. Kokoro. Not to mention that I might have been the one who called you here. Called me here? I can't say for sure, but I was thinking that I missed you when you appeared. If I'm the one responsible for you being torn from your life and losing your memories, I don't know if I could take it. So relieved to hear someone call my name. I thought that maybe I was the only one in this world. I thought that maybe no one would remember me. I was so scared and lonely. But... You were there, and you remembered me! So thank you, Kokoro. Thank you for not forgetting me. Call me by my name? That's why I wanted to make this for you, to show you my gratitude. Coffee? Would you try it? Yeah, of course. I wasn't sure if you'd like it black or with cream and sugar. Which would you prefer? Well then. Sweet, make it as sweet as you can. <laughs> of course. I'm glad, now that it's on our second run of this, they didn't have that a lingering thread that went on for a while with Kokoro. I'm glad that they kind of wrapped that up, her having doubts and like being evasive of Shio. They kind of wrap it up kind of quick. Because it can be kind of tiring in some stories. Because like, there's this, like this, not drama, but like collision between characters for one reason or another. And then they drag it out for like a whole chapter of the story before they finally find their way again. And it's like, it can be a little tiring sometimes. It can be a little bit like, come on, especially when you're back again on the next run. It's like you don't want it to last long because it does kind of wear you thin. And when I went through Ultra Despair Girls, that was a good example of it. The whole of um, Chapter 3 
is the main two characters falling out and then chapter four is them finding and trusting each other again and finding a way forward together and it was like chapter three it, it became so exhausting in places because of it because they were always kind of at each other's throats because they were always kind of like like but they, to be honest, they were being kind of bitchy to one another. Like, they'd pick any opportunity to kind of just lay a dig at each other. And it's like, fucking hell. <laughs> yeah, that was delicious. You're amazing, Shio. Thank you very much. I didn't really understand it myself, but it was like my body moved all on its own. I knew exactly what um, to do to make a decision. The delicious cup. And that's going to lead to unlocking your thing? Like, I'd done it before. Whoa! I sound Kokoro. Yeah, it must be. The heartscape's now connected. What is this notification? Heartscape, that's... Last time you got something like this um, was when Kokoro talked about her secret hideout. Your trigger must be the coffee. So if we go there... Yeah, come on, let's check it out. Oh, sorry, if I moan it? Yeah, that's exactly it. Especially because that felt so un undeserved. I always say that felt so undeserved because he was acting like he was bullying everyone, constantly throwing shit at everyone. Ryuji snapped back once and he turned it into an entire story arc. And it was so like, ugh, with it, you know? Right, I'm going to access Shio's. Take one foot into it so we've actually got the ability to run around in it and then wrap up because then, you know, I've got somewhere to grind off screen, you know? Reina, Yuki! Guys, over here! Look at this. Zero from last time, it's shining. And preferably, if I can, um, get Shio in the party. So then I've got someone to gr else to grind up with. Hello, hello, it's everyone's favourite resource. You open a new heartscape. Not bad, not bad. Hey, we came up with that name, you know. It's easier to understand this way, right? Besides, it's a sweet name and I want to use it. Thanks, Lime. Annoying as always. You need to change the destination and you'll be off to Mishio's Heartscape. Uh, use that wheel. You can spin it to choose the world you want to visit. Have a good trip. Yes, this must be the wheel. What's the wheel doing here anyway? Oh, it's always been here, hasn't it? No idea who put it there, though. You mean it's been a part of this world from the beginning? But who created it? And for what? No idea. All we can do is turn this and go to Shio's heartscape. My heartscape? What's wrong? Were you afraid, Kokoro? Huh? I'm afraid. Our heartscape is a world constructed from my heart, isn't that right? Could going inside have some kind of negative effect on my heart? And what if there's a part of me that in there I'd rather keep hidden? What if I see something terrible? Shio... To be honest, I was a little scared. And Ryuji defense. Yeah, Ryuji didn't deserve what he got. Um, but I wanted to know what happened before I lost my memory and find out more about this world, for Al. And I didn't want mention this to anyone, but I was jealous of Al. What, me? I figured that the fact that you wanted to go home so badly means that you must have something important waiting for you there. That you must have a very special memories and people there waiting for you. That's what I was jealous of. So I wanted to get my memory back and show everyone. Like, I'm the real Kokoro Utsubo. I have lots of special memories, all of my own. The Kokoro is so goddamn precious. <laughs> She's so precious when she wants to be. Kokoro. I had no idea you felt that way. I'll wait until we get to yours, Reina. We're going to learn. A l we're going to have a lot of didn't realize you thought like that. Hey, Shio. Let's go find the real you together. You think I'll have memories like those too? I'm sure you do. And if you don't, we can make some new ones together. Kokoro. Okay, I'd like to go. All oh, right. Well, if everyone's ready, let's do this thing. By the way, what happened to you three anyways? We got a notification on our phones all of a sudden. We had a cup of coffee together. That's it. There must be some reason for it. Yeah, I think so too. I have a feeling we may find that reason somewhere in the heartscape. But build a facility. I've made several. Now you have a place full of everyone's feelings, which can turn fuel your heart. I recommend building anything and everything that comes to mind. Yeah, because it will lead to more dates as well. Speaking of, can we go? No, we can't. We have to actually enter. 
Yeah, the worst you'll find is that she messed up her makeup as a kid. Yeah, which is hilarious. <laughs> like, I, I still remember that one. I was sitting there, like, that's really not embarrassing. I think that happened to everyone. 13, so we are actually the right level for it. We are actually the appropriate level. But let's actually make sure Shio joins the party for show, and then I'll wrap up. So then when I grind, she doesn't get left behind. Oh, Shio's Heartscape. It's got, I'm going to enjoy going back through this again um, in the next Blue Reflection stream. God, this piano piece as well. Are those train tracks and water? It's all so different from Kokoro's Heartscape. I guess they really do change from person to person. Memories will start to flood in as we walk around. I'm sure we'll be able to find yours. Memories flooding in. But you should know, there are... Demons. Oh, we're still on hard mode. Okay. Oh my, what is... These are the demons. Kasuga, get back. Everyone, check your phone. Yuki, is this really the time for... Shio, you can transform now. What? Really? And you got like the second best party member in the game because you're super goddamn quick, have great attack, decent defense. <laughs> Nobody remembers this too. I must have done this before. I will fight. Shio. Shio, are you sure you can handle this? Yeah, I can do it. And I also need to pick what costume I'm going to put her in because now I think we can change her outfit. We'll back you up. Here it come, guys. Oh, now that it's zoomed out, I kind of noticed it again there and put it back in my mind. If they make a third game, tiniest, tiniest little request. Give one of the girls something other than a skirt. Let at least one of them wear trousers or jeans or something. Why does all, why do all of them have to be in skirts of different set shapes and sizes? I know it's like, you know, like Japanese schoolgirl attire and whatnot, but the trousers must exist in Japan. Come on. <laughs> But now we've got supports. We've got the ordering, we've got the cycles, we need to fill that out, we can swap them in, we can use items. You ordered your items, your items will now be used after one loop. It can be activated, that's the end of explanation. Yeah, have enjoy. But look at the E for speed boost everyone else has. I think there's a character that, yeah, um, Shio and Kokoro and Ao are both starting it too. It took a lot longer for us to get to that point before. Not having Al as the main is weird. Having to press L2 for I'm just pressing X with no Shio's on lead. Eleven, oh god. Ooh, okay, she's only it's only a little behind. That's not to the end of the world. She'll catch up. Keep in mind, when we got here on, on my normal playthrough, um, Shio was a level ahead of us. We ended at level 10 then. I thought we ended at a higher level than that. Whoops. <sighs> Shio, that was amazing. I surprised myself. I didn't know I could move like that. Ah, oh, what a relief. It'll be a big help when we go exploring. Well, sorry for not being any help. No, that's not what I meant. Don't take it like that. It's like we'll be fighting alongside each other. Yeah, I hope you'll teach me everything you know. Kokoro? Oh, I'm sorry. If there was ever someone in trouble, I'll help them best I can. Huh? I'll do my best, Shio. Alright, now that we've added another trustworthy member to our group, let's keep moving. Everyone, I just wanted to say that I really appreciate you helping me get my memory back. How formal. Huh? Yeah, loosen up a little. Yeah. Let's go get the rest of Shio's memories back. Yeah! Even Raina joins in. <laughs> Even Raina's like, no, 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 come on. We're a group of friends, come on. 
Oh, and because we're rank 6, we can actually explore more of this. Or at a high enough rank to explore some of this. I think it's the rank 4 opens these, some of these up. So that's at least something. Nice. Oh, our first character choice scene. I saw that. We have to pick someone the favor. Uh-oh. I just want to go back and sit check the costumes and then we'll wrap up. What are you reading, Al? It's a novel called um, Est Fantasia. You can probably tell from the name, but it's a fantasy novel. You're liking it, huh? You can tell. It looks like you're having a lot of fun. I guess there's no point in hiding it. I want to fly and shoot magic. Oh, this is the Atelier Riser. Right. I want to be all those over um, super overpowered superpowers. That's why fantasy is so great. It makes you feel like you can do anything. And there she goes. I know exactly what you mean. Why does it sound like you're bragging? I wish we had magic that we could use when we fight. Like, bam, boom, bang. <laughs> yeah, that's the Atelier Riser dungeon. Is that a trick? Do you have firecracker somewhere? That, that wasn't me. Where did that come from? What? Yeah, Riser's hardscape is now connected. What's going on? Some of the letters are missing. It's the same mystery when a new hardscape appears, isn't it? This Riser whatever person. Who could they be? I think the only thing that kind of sucks is because the DLC dungeon opens up this early, they make it so only these four are in any of the cutscenes for it because they don't know how far along you could be. So they have to assume you could have somehow done it at the earliest possible point. Yeah, you should go and see. Right. There's a people scene here. Let's see who we can agree with. I'm assuming these three. Hey, I just realized that we never had a welcome party. Ah, oh, crap. I totally forgot. What have I done? Welcome party for whom? Everyone. It's interesting that they talk about this, considering how the later the game goes, where they do actually have a welcome party that these three set up. The three of us have been here for a while, but Al and the rest only came recently, right? So I thought the three of us should throw a big party for the newcomers. Why am I getting roped into planning this? We're the first generation. We've always been a trio. I don't think that's how I'd describe it. I'd say we're more like... Family? Oh, I like that. Coco is the mum, Rain is the dad, and I'm the daughter. Why am I the father? Besides, I think you're more like a pet dog than a daughter. Hmm, fine. I'll just throw the welcome pipe by myself. What kind of party would you like, Al? It's not going to be a surprise. Just to get some ideas. What do you have in mind, Yuki? Well, first, we'll fill a, bu fill a bunch of water up balloons and paint with paint. Stop right there. I'm not talking to you, Reina. As long as this um, party takes place on school grounds, I have the right to speak. But up to me, I should remove you or make a homemade planetarium. You can just look at the sky if you want to see the stars. It's not the same. It's interesting that she wants to see stars. <laughs> it's interesting that Raina wants to see stars. <laughs> Considering. I want to have a buffet with chocolate fondue fountain and everything. Dang it, that's a great idea. Who did you like best, Oshizaki? Um, it's going to boost their points. I can't remember who's the lowest of the three. They're roundish the same, so for now I will just go with Raina since I think I picked Yuki last time. I like Raina's idea. I'm curious about what a homemade planetarium would look like. We need the materials, of course, but I'm sure we'll think of something. Will you do the narration too, Ra Raina? Like here we have Vega, Denob, and Altair, the three stars, the Summer Triangle, or something like that? No. Aww. I bet she'd do it if I bugged her about it. <laughs> now that I think about it, there's something holding us back from doing all three. Yeah, that could be fun. Yes, we need as much paint as we can carry. Stop right there. <laughs> oh, another scene we just stumbled into, I guess. Oh, hello, Shio. Kasuga, what are you looking at? Oh, uh, nothing in particular. I was just staring off into space. 
I enjoy the atmosphere of a quiet classroom. I don't really know why though. But early in the morning, before everyone arrives, or in the evening after everyone has gone home, the classroom has this special air to it. Kasuga, you're a real poet, aren't you? What? <laughs> you just said that sort of lyrical tone. Hey, Yuki can boost Shio's attack, please do. And her either recovery speed hawk, please do. Uh, new skill, knock up, knock back, knock, knock up, Jesus. New fragment slot. I'll worry about what fragments I'll give her off screen. Because there's like four slots to worry about, and like, you know, we've still got another slot there, and uh, I'll worry about that later. Oh, we've got some more dates to do. No, no, next time, next time. That can be the thing we, we open up the next one with. We can open up the next stream with some dates. <laughs> so we have something to like warm ourselves up into before we dive into the danger zone. I was going to go check Shio's costumes and see if there's an alternate I'm prepared to give that's different from what I left her with. Oh, a rusty bucket. Okay. It's only going to be the old the Hoshinomiya uniform, because obviously I'm not going to have her walking around like that for the whole thing. And I'm not into that. And I think that's a bit on the on the, on the the bar, so no, I think I'll go... I think the ultimate's the alt's alright. I think now I know her better, I think the alt suits a little bit, because it does have a bit more of a cutesy vibe to it. I think I can put up with that. It's just, it's literally just this one. This one... Especially because the colours are representative of, like, a um, patient attire, I've just realised. She makes her look like a, I'm a hospital patient. So even more, nah, we're not doing that one. It literally just en like, entered my head at that second, she looks like a hospital patient. <laughs> Ooh, a damp washcloth as well. But... Um, although we stumbled with Death Wish and eventually broke down into hard, we did eventually manage to make some progress and save Shio, do some basic dates and access her, <clears throat> as my throat goes, her heart heartscape, and get her in the party. So, next time you come back to this, we'll be doing some of those dates and diving headfirst into those, that heartscape. Let me turn to the title menu. So, as I said, tomorrow I'll be um, resting. Why is Kirara there? Why is, why is Hina there? <laughs> Hang on, <laughs> that's not supposed to be accurate anymore. That's not accurate, where is it? Why is everyone there? Is, is it gonna, and why is Kirara there in particular? It's like it's for her chapter dungeon, that's really out of place. Anyway, maybe it's because it's you know, new game plus, it's messing with something, but whatever. As always, thank you so so much for watching and I'll see you guys next time. So it'll be on Thursday for more hat in time. <laughs>